Make that public. Kind of awkward to get everything like in the right places at the right times, because you know I got some of the assets meant for something else that's happening this week. You know, you know what I mean. You know, what I mean? you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, I like the idea that people have no idea the stream is happening, and then uh, we're like, oh my god, there's a super jack catch up, oh, and, and then they open it up, and uh, the first thing they see is going to be this image. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> it's like, um, oh no, I'm not quite sure what to make of this. Keep it away. Just got some straggly memes that we're checking out, you know, of the neutral variety. See, I can believe this grandma's house. <laughs> Face is really good. <laughs> Just need to add shades. Yeah. That's some more evidence of Joel's exploits. Uh, Joel was upset because Joel killed Joel. Joel has become this ancient evil Mesopotamian death god. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so funny that Hit and Run lets you do that. He just kicked people. I was like, ah, oh, let's give him the option to just go around and kick people. It's like, they probably implemented, they were like, we also have kids running around in this world. It's like, oh, well. <laughs> well, I guess they're getting kicked now, aren't they? It's up to the players. It's like, oh, we're not going to put some special code in the game that says you can't kick children. That's lame. Kick them and it hits your foot and you go to jail. It wouldn't surprise me with these days they did something like that. It's like, hey, children are innocent. Massive, do you not know themes? I like how Do you not know themes. Um, Joe's Fanson is just the dragon creature in basically any of these memes now. We'll just turn up. Obviously, context-wise, some people may not know what I'm referring to, but there's another example. They will eventually see. Mm. You massives! <laughs> Look at this A bit of foreshadowing. Okay, beautiful. Okay. The best. <gasps> He's right. That meme is better than in-game. Bum, 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 bum. Say my name. Wags. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> I think someone said hi, Wags, right at the beginning. Hello, chat. I see you there. Hello. You know, this meme about you being a whammons. Lucian's 8. Oh shit, that was a thing, wasn't it? Yeah, all women oceans movie that no one remembers. No one saw it, I don't think. Uh, let me take a look. Anyone in chat, did like you see game. this movie? <laughs> we need to. If, does a movie exist if no one saw it? That is the question. Looks like it. Um. Do. It says that according to Box Office Mojo, Ocean's 8 grossed 41.5 million over the weekend, which makes it the most successful debut of the Ocean's franchise. What? <laughs> and that, yeah, and that's just the domestic domestic box office. So far, Ocean's 8 has made, you know, 53.7 million worldwide. The movie reportedly cost 7 million to make, so this is a big feat. Um, let's see. So apparently, Ocean's 11 is the most. Um, it, it made the most money. Um, Ocean's Eleven from two thousand one. Uh huh. Uh, let's see. Oh, there is. Yeah, well, I've I got guess it did good. People are hearing water in the background. That is something. I think it's some. It might be a video, or, or a, it could be my game. Actually, I'll. Uh, do, no one it, talks about it, but I guess it made money. Chat vote. Water on or off? I can get it. I can turn it off. Or do you want it to, to leave it on? It's up to you. Water? Yeah, I got like a water running sound right in the background. It's like rain. Oh, well, is it, is it raining? Um, where I am at right now? No. It's it's one of them artificial... Oh gosh. <laughs> I got more ons than offs, I think. Oh yeah, like a rain noise thing? Yeah, people like rain. Oh, Weirdos. I like rain. All Green's kinds nice. of blood. Look all blood on the screen. All different colors. It's wonderful. I don't even... what? <laughs> we said this at EFAB 98, apparently. Hmm. So recent, and yet... Oh, so mysterious. What, what is with everyone's heads? We're like blood. 
Oh, I, I don't know. droplets, I guess. Oh, like yeah, right. I see. These are our. These are our. Um, what? It's like a persona, but liquid. Mm -hmm. Our our wet sonas. I like the drinkers would come with a bottle that has a bunch of liquid in it as well. Oh yeah. What does it mean it's, when when is a that droplet? like cannibalism? I think so, but there's no digestive system, so doesn't it just don't they just become a part of themselves? I don't know. Does he water down the alcohol, or is like the if alcohol you consumed him? a person and you just became like a a twin? You have your drunk twin because you drank too much alcohol and it became you. You ate a person. But it wanted to move out. Live its own life. Rag and Molly. You to it? In the red car law. Molly. Molly. Oh, hi, Rag. I just had a little Molly sleep. Get in the car, Molly. Get in the car. Get in the car. <laughs> in the car. Every morning, guys. Also, this is a, a look into the future. You got, you got. I guess I'm I'm doing an editing stream for Game of Thrones season eight, episode six. Uh. Mhm. Mm uh, you got Donk you for subscribing. Bingle Bingle Blue 2013. Bingle Blue 2013 is is a good dude. You watched Lord of the Rings wrong to quote some other idiot. This is taken from the cinematic Venom chat. I can tell. Clip of two peas. Jesus Christ, so many so many people watching me edit. Ugh. Must be must be boring though, right? Or maybe it's a highlights. It could be highlights. Happen. We'd have a lot of highlights if we did editing stuff live. I wouldn't though, I wouldn't want people to and spoilers, know, isn't it? Can't have any spoilers. My girth exceeds your length. <laughs> <laughs> I have no doubt about that. He's a force of nature. Yeah, diabetes done great as an EFAP mega he villain. He's a force of measurements. And uh, last one I got for today is uh, this little cutie pie. Look at it. Oh my god. Someone made themselves wow. some rags and more plushies. Look at that. That's incredible. I, I, I was, I was going to... I didn't know if I wanted to say crazy and incredible, so I was like, <laughs> that's incredible. That's incredible. Um, look at that. It's got the stitches on it. And I got a little tongue. And you got the little... Hi. Wow. Very cute. We wow. unfortunately do not have any plushies available, but maybe in the future, you know? I feel like you're very plushable, obviously. Yeah. Um I hmm. Yeah, I think so. I'm I'm soft and cuddly. Mm -hmm. So a plush version of that would be, you know, maybe doubly so. I feel like That's if you made one of me, for. you also need a, um like a stretch Armstrong style thing. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. Is that what he was called in America as well? Stretch Armstrong? Yeah. Well, Captain, or Mr. Fantastic? Um, well, it was a toy that was like pl stretchy plastic that had like, I think, sand inside it. And you could stretch him really far. So, I think... I know what you're talking about. Um, he only had like the Speedo, blonde guy, super buff, and you just... Yeah, I think so. Him. Um, I think so, as far as I know. Yeah, some people saying he was Stretch Armstrong and... Born starch inside him, I guess. I don't know. Ooh, yummy! Mm. So he doubled his emergency rations. Senator Armstrong. <laughs> no, not that one. Um, so yeah, uh, th those are some memes. We got plenty of memes on the way that have already been recorded, and uh, well, we'll talk more about what's on the way soon enough. For now, Rags and I just got to catch up on the the last bits and bobs of super chats we got from it was the uh, EFAB 98s ones. So, getting there. First off is the Streamlabs ones, and uh, in the meantime, we will watch Hadhod miss as he tries to strike Urukai with his wonderful Hamor. Hamax, I don't know. Did Mola give up funny videos? No, this is, we don't, we're not doing videos today. <laughs> Every video we do is hilarious. True. Shut up. This being one of the best examples. You probably you you might not even know it, because that's how subtle our humor is. But you've probably laughed at least a dozen times while watching this video already. Yeah, people don't even know when they're laughing. That's how amazing it is. Wait, why do I have to? The automatic like detection there was was pretty intense. Game. Let me let me just run around and search for things. Gosh. 
I remember playing Lord of the Rings the Third Age in co-op with my friend and playing Helm's Deep Fight for three hours, spamming Aura and Shield of the Valor to keep the team alive until the enemy finally did something different or missed and gave our chance to attack, lol. Yep, that definitely is a thing that can happen. Because you can't be beaten as long as you're casting that on uh, Idril. Bit, bit unbalanced. We've never mentioned that about this game, have we? The Third Age? No. It's a, yeah, it's a pretty good game. You know? Fully balanced. Um, fucking Haddad missing, what did I say? As opposed to Last of Us 2, Neo Automata is a great example of a narrative that could only exist as a video game and makes use of the medium in a meaningful way. Not sure what you think of the story, but would definitely recommend for the experience. Well, the, the, I've heard good things about it. People recommend it fairly regularly. Have you ever watched anything and thought this would be better as a game? Also, um, don't. There's one. Human I'm Annihilation. Oh. <laughs> That's, you know, I. Yeah. Because <laughs> that would be a fun game, I think. It, like like a Colonial Marines type fun. Yeah. I just feel um, laughing at all of it. I mean, we mentioned Colonial Marines. That is not on my list of. Oh, Aliens! That would be better as a video game. It, there's no reason it can't work. I will I mean, say this. No reason it can't work. Yeah, I think it would be pretty great as a video game. At, at its best. I feel yeah, like Aliens would be done fantastic. Well, like you're obviously to not to be too cliche, but you'd be the, the rookie character. You're like you're brought in as your first mission or something out of training, and all these dudes are like veterans, you get to know them. And you get in there and they're all getting getting taken down one by one while you figure out the mystery of LV-426, it could be really good. Yeah, they say this I as mean, if there haven't been ones, people attempting this, it's like, yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, we just do it well. You get a competent team, give them the budget they need, and, oh, and you could, you could have flashback segments, like it's a two-parter, where you can play as the, uh, the people in Hadley's Hope, mm -hmm. fighting off the xenomorphs, and you, but you didn't have the military equipment that the Marines have that you you normally play you normally play with so maybe you have a level where you have to improvise and move stuff around or you have to buy time and it's like a holdout mode against um, aliens from getting through the doors or maybe that's a maybe that's a well done stealth section to sort of break it up but there's a lot of stuff you could do that makes a lot of that would make a lot of sense but but alas mm -hmm. here be we um. But yeah, near Automata, I've only heard good things. I uh, don't know much about the narrative, though. When my plan goes well, I'll be able to watch EFAP 100 from start to finish in my vacation. Oh, oh hey. Very good, yes. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna murder this wonderful Urukai. You should. Oh, didn't miss either hit. Good job, Hadhod. Race it. Um, been watching for a bit without sending... Oh, dear. Yeah, I've left my notifications on. Ah! Un momento, por favor. Boom. Okay, good. Sorry. Right. Been watching for a bit without sending any donos, so I thought I'd throw in uh, some shackles. Thank you for the vids and the streams. Also, hi, Rags. Oh, hello. And thank you. Glad you're liking yeah, what thank we're you doing. Very much. Very generous. And uh, it, we're always very thankful for... It, it obviously supports the shit out of... Uh, well, both of our channels, technically, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, with more things to come along the way from very generous viewers such as yourselves. Uh, thank you very much. Ahoy there, tasteless gentleman. Hi, Rags. Drinker. Hello. Have you ever read Patrick O'Brien's Aubrey Maturin series? Have you ever watched Master and Commander? Is it worth a drink or recommends? Um, I will pop that in my giant selection of questions for people, if ever they're able to answer them. Um... But hello, of course. That, there was a hello in there for us, and that's... There you go. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, now I have to fight Frostfang Barioth while constantly thinking of how Heffalumps and Woozles are very confusled and the and and are definitely coming to guzzle up my quest rewards. Anyway, love you all, and I'm excited for EFAP 100 and the 1.2 billion memes therein. Yeah, gotta be careful. Before your, your eyes, you'll see them multiple. I, uh... I don't even know. What, what's, what's a half a lump again? If honey's what you covet, you'll find that they love it because they do so love the things you prize. That's a half a lump? Yeah, half a lumps and woozles. They're I from Winnie that. the Pooh. Oh. They were from Winnie the Pooh in the blustery day. <laughs> um, 
Which was one of which, which I think was my favorite. No, my favorite was Pooh's Grand Adventure. What does it mean for a day um, to be blustery? Just windy. Oh, okay. But here's the thing: it starts out as a very blustery day and very windy day, but it then it starts though. to rain, and the hundred acre wood floods. Oh no! Like catastrophically so. There's water is it, millions it, of dead. Um. Yes. <laughs> That's how it opens. You're like, oh. Millions dead. You just see bodies floating in the water. Well, so, I don't know if they have to breathe, though, because they're made out of stuffing and stuff. Oh, yeah. Can't be comfortable, though, right? Like, being, I don't know. It might be... Being a stuffing extremely. creature and then having that happen. I don't know. Fucking hell, they just keep giving comfortable. me random encounters. What is this, Pokemon? <laughs> um... Boop, boop. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Joel, and Hell followed with him. Revelation 6, 8. Yeah, I mean, they warned us. But he ate all the cures for all the diseases. Literally, there was a button to save everyone from everything, and Joel took the batteries out of it. What a, what a dingus. Yeah. Hello, Muller and High Rags. Hello. Hello. Your TLJ Dang. Part 2 Let's Play was a lot of fun to watch. I think they mean no, The Last of Us 2. <laughs> no, no. First off, no, it was horrible. It was horrible. Um, to fight the infected and spores, wouldn't a pesticide specifically for fungus be effective and a new mechanic for gameplay? May the dawn bless you and Tonal cook for you. Oh, that's nice. Imagine Tonal cooking for you in heaven. That'd be great. That would be really nice. Um, as for... I don't know. This is the thing. If 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 someone's to look into all the elements of of The Last of Us, I, I feel like more and more you'll discover how poorly the Fireflies were handling everything. Um. But uh, as for like a pesticide designed for viruses or something, um, I wonder if it's just at the point that it was just unfeasible because they're all over the place and they can't get one working properly. I don't know. Like uh. I'd have to I'd have to do a lot of googling to find out if it's um a possibility. Also, yeah, my whole crew is about to die, and it's like better cast auto resurrection. <laughs> uh oh. Muller, I don't intend to make a video about The Last of Us Two. The Last of Us Two. Hold my bigot sandwich. Or <laughs> it says T. Louis the second actually. T. Louis. <laughs> One of the great French kings. Oh yes. Um. All right, and that's caught up on Streamlabs now to catch up on ninety eight super chats. Damn it, Raggles! Wilford Brimley died last weekend. Don't you take his name in vain. I don't. I don't well, did, did you ever take his name in vain? I can't remember, but it must have been under a period of great duress, mm -hmm. and I feel it was probably warranted. I don't use words lightly. I'm a very heavy speaker. Yeah. That uh. Much that like Wilford Brimley was just a heavy person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In three his days, name carries the weight of his body. Oh, I think I think most people got that. I I certainly did. Excuse me while I resurrect more teammates. In three days, Ellie killed 193 WLF members in combat. I might have read that one out before. I remember thinking of, at least Jeez. about it, but uh, yeah, intense. Ellie's uh, efficient. Ellie kills a ton of people for nothing. First game, her biggest fear was to end up alone. The game did just that. Also, did you see the gun difference? Again, I think we may have answered that one before, because I remember saying the, that. Yeah, one was a bit extendoed. The, um... Uh, Revolver, wasn't it? Well, uh, I was thinking more, like, animations and stuff like that. Like, like the, even, you know, like, the gun upgrading workshop. Like, it, it seems like they, they wanted to add a lot of detail into... You know, you know, it's like, oh, you're upgrading this gun to do this, and so you have to actually yeah. show them doing a, at least close, like an approximation of what you do in real life to modify the gun. It's like, okay. I'm not sure, they didn't really need to do all of that. <laughs> I would have preferred them focus on other things, but hey, you know. Um, yeah. But if you, in terms of gun difference for like gameplay, yeah, there's lots of um, little changes. The one I was not a fan of is in The Last of Us 1, you can uh, upgrade the weapon sway to fuck off, but in the second one you can't. I'm not a I fan hate of weapon swaying games. Not a fan. Don't like it. 
it's border i just consider it borderline artificial difficulty well, just like, to make things harder for the sake of it it's as if someone you're playing especially with fucking sticks as well and someone just puts their fingers on the sticks and randomly starts moving them slowly in different directions with you on, and you're just like stop, stop why are you doing that i don't need i don't need you to do that it's, you're annoying me um I mean, there's no reason why in a third-person shooter game, when you aim, you can do a quick hip fire where you could point the gun at people, or you can actually aim down the sights and it swaps from a third person over the camera to a first person looking down the sights of the gun. Yeah. Ain't no reason you can't do that. I mean, they do that with the, the sniper scope, I think, right? You're, uh, you, you become first person technically. So, yeah, even they do it sometimes. Uh, it's a challenge in Hitman 47 and MGS games to kill only the targets and no one else, and so freaking fun. This is, yeah, we've talked about this a lot. It's, uh, the Last of Us 2 is doing literally nothing new, and what it is doing, it's not doing very well. Uh, the standard sort of way to do stealth versus guns a blazing is that, um, Stealth is harder but more rewarding, and uh, Guns are blazing is its its own sort of reward, as in you're just like woohoo, running around, boom, 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 and, and but but preferably you don't get rewarded for doing it. It's supposed to be harder. Uh, once it happens, I mean, like to maintain stealth throughout a whole level isn't supposed to be easy because that's like the whole point. Um. But once you're caught in guns blazing, because you're like, fuck it, I'm just gonna blow everyone away with my shotgun, it should then uh, give you some, like, handicaps, alarms go off, many enemies attack you at once, that sort of thing. Stand yeah, stuff. definitely a trade-off for, yeah, you could do this. Uh, it's it's very doable, but, um, you know, there, there will be there will be repercussions for you doing that. But Last of Us 2 was the worst of both worlds. You could stealth as much as you want, and then go guns a blazing, and then just hide behind a rock for five seconds, and you're back to stealth. It's like, wow. It doesn't feel like it punishes you, as I said before in games. When it comes to stealth, you don't have to... Like a, like a Splinter Cell or a Deus Ex or something. If people fail stealth, they might just restart themselves because they want to succeed. And they, they want to get it right. But if they can just reset and everything's fine after a moment, then, yeah, don't worry about it. Don't bother. Mm -hmm. Fine. No, no real consequences. I uh, hated that dog more because it shares a name with Batwoman's sister. I want a mod where Ellie is Kate and the dog has Alice's face. I mean, you could probably make a meme for that, I, I imagine. Just, uh... It's hard yeah, to like the dog, dog because, um, people, people felt... Did you ever see I Am Legend? Yes. People felt that the dog in that was um, potentially m manipulative, and I was always like, no, I think they did it really well. They um, did it all right, the dog? Yeah, I the, think they did the dog all right. Well, the thing is, like, I would agree with both statements. I'd be like, it is manipulative, but they also did it well. Like, of course it's manipulative. They, they want you to feel sad, but, like, they did everything they were supposed to. Yeah. Every beat was established. The, like, why is the dog there? We got that. And then it's like, what does the dog do in relation to Will Smith's character? And it's like, we got that. And then the dog dies saving him. And it's like, yep, we got... That's the beats. Thing is, though, with um, The Last of Us 2 dog, it's it was all... From, from the beginning, you knew exactly what they were trying to do. And so your brain was on the lookout for all of the attempts to emotionally manipulate you, and it was very artificial. Well, yeah, I think in the way that it was set up. They really crossed the line when they made it mandatory to play fetch. I think it was like, all right, I think we've we're fucked up now because uh, you may as well have just had it all go black and then white writing saying the dog is cute. Do you like the dog? And then you have to press yes. Yeah, dogs are amazing. Do you agree? And it's just a yes, <laughs> and there's no other option. <laughs> You can't proceed until you agree with the game that the dog is great. <laughs> At the end of the game, it's like, did you feel sad about this experience and yet thought the game was good? Yes or definitely? Fill out our uh, uh, our customer <laughs> opinion survey about the dog. Um, the no-kill run is a staple of the MGS series. Of course you can do it in the fifth game. But... Uh, in the fifth game, yeah, I um, in Metal Gear Solid Five, I didn't kill. I did a I did a stealth, non-lethal playthrough. Yeah, I haven't. And it was fun. Played it. I I liked it. Metal Gear Solid Five is fun mechanically, 
but don't fucking ask me to tell you what the story is. So, something about stuff. <laughs> something about stuff. Something about stuff. Oh, dude, I'm fine with Aragorn. Aragorn. He's the cool one. He has the sword. Mountain Blood. shield time. Uh, the game does not treat you like a bad person. Cosmonaut Variety Hour is lying. Oh, that was about MGS5, right? Yeah, I... You'd have to give me a reference, my dude, because I do not know where the game makes you feel like a bad person. You yeah. can do baddish things, I guess? But not really? Yeah, because what it sounded like from what he was saying was, um... The game frames... Like, no matter what your choices are, the game will frame you as a bad person. And uh, obviously, I haven't played it, so I wouldn't... I don't know how to respond to that. I'm just like, hmm. Maybe. You know, when you have Aragorn on your team, Barathor is really yeah. just a discount. You're like, oh... Mm. I guess you're there. I can help, guys. I have Echthalian <laughs> Wrath. It's okay. <laughs> it, it Aragorn do... laughs at your Echthalian. A bane of fucking Saruman. Was that Saruman or Sauron? I need to read that again. Uh, where are we? MGS5 actually makes you enemies more alert, perform radio check-in, perform, sorry, and I think have more guards if you're more violent. The game uh, does change when you're bad, quote-unquote. What is Sauron? Yeah, um, Metal Gear Solid? Apparently, yeah. Yeah, interesting. That's the thing I've, I only uh, did the one playthrough, and it was the stealth no kill playthrough. So I would not have uh, would not have got that myself. I usually only hear good things mechanically about the Metal Gear Solid uh, franchise. Fun so. to play. Mm. Fun to play. Oh, I should have casted more cheating spells. Whoops. Uh, Rags, remember when Big Boss makes a zoo for taking animals out of the war zone and gets paid for it? What a villain! Oh yeah, that's right. You could. You can Fulton extract with atmospheric balloons animals from the wild, and it's hilarious. <laughs> I love it. I thought they were making a reference to how, like... I can't... It's hard for me to, like, even zoo, just that way I'm, like, you referencing the zebra and the... What's happening? <laughs> what are we doing? He saves a zebra. Such a good one. They're in Seattle, but a zebra escaped from the zoo. It's an exotic, wild animal. We have to save it. I saw people discussing how absurd it is that a zebra was there, and then someone else was like, well, there were giraffes in that same area in the first game. And then someone was like, okay. What? Okay, first off, it's whataboutism. <laughs> yeah. Second off, I know exactly what they're doing. Is, well, this is the thing. Well, there was a zoo. They escaped from the zoo. Um, like, I don't, could a giraffe live in North America that outside was, of the zoo? That's what, what you just described the rest of the comment section. <laughs> I was gonna say, oh, like, okay. so, so it was like, that's what about is about. Uh, it doesn't change how stupid it is. This was like, if they came from a zoo, and it's like, how would they survive if they're zoo animals for this long? Like, either they I broke mean, out 20 years ago, or they didn't break out at all, and they would have just died because no one would be feeding them, so. Someone. I, <laughs> I went to Google. And I started typing out, could a giraffe survive in? And it's, it's, and one of them is like, why can't a giraffe survive in Antarctica? <laughs> <laughs> As an autofill. It's like, I've got a few hunches. <laughs> Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> could a giraffe survive in North America? Let's see. Um... Let's see. Um, while I suspect some North America tree or fern could satisfy their diet, North American plains probably don't have them, and our forests are not the type of environment a giraffe would live in. North American plains just don't have the trees giraffes need to eat. Also, giraffes would freeze. Um, Which is true. If they're in Seattle, it gets fucking cold as tits in the, uh, in, in the winter, in the fall. They would especially. wear giraffe coats, idiot. Giraffe coats? <laughs> Made by the giraffe, Kota. Um, I'm a utilitarian, and brutally torturing Joel brought no good to society. It only made it worse. I would still loathe Abby. Well, so that's not yeah, really... Yeah, pure vengeance. Yeah, I was gonna say, that's not really the problem. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't think she was trying to do it for the good of society. She was just getting revenge. Um, yeah, even if she claims revenge. otherwise. The problem... Is I'm not convinced that that's something her character would do, and nor do I, I personally think that she is forgiven by seeing her do nice things. Yeah, um, they put us in a really, really odd situation where they simultaneously go too far and also not far enough. Yeah. 
in order to try and make her redeemed in the eyes of player who watched her kill Joel so brutally, they, like I said, they, they really put themselves in a pickle as to what they need to do. Do we do we make her too, so nice that she's likable, which means that there's no way she'd kill Joel? Or do we put her in a position where her character lends itself to being that way towards Joel, which means that we'll, we're never going to connect with her and sympathize with her? Really a bad position to put yourself in as a game dev. Really baffled as to why they why, why they did it. Very confusing strategy. Because yeah, we talked to her before, and you, I, I think they would have been way better to just go all out and make her a bad person. And that Joel was un unlucky to have killed the father of someone who is unstable. And, uh fucking enjoys the post-apocalypse. Because at least then I'd be like, I understand how this works. But yeah, instead they're like, something. don't you, don't you, like, empathize with her? She's a human too. And that, that gets to me so hard. Like, of course, why do you think I'm angry? Like, it's not, it's got nothing to do, if she was a robot, why would I be mad? You Stop know, you, trying to be like, oh, they're humans with families. Like, I know, I know, I never, I never forgot. I just never gave a shit because they're trying to kill me right now. Do you know what I mean, though? If, like, a fucking Terminator, well... Literal, just your standard bargain bin robot style thing walks in the room and just shoots the shit out of Joel until he's like a pile of flesh. Your first question isn't like, how do we find this robot and take revenge on it? It's who built the fucking robot and who sent it here? Because who cares about the fucking robot? Like, you, you we need to know. Doing its programming. And if, yeah, and that's kind of what I mean. Like, if it turns out it's just a random robot who burst in through and killed him, at that point you're not like looking for revenge. You're just sad. Yeah, you're just like, what the fuck just happened? And so their insistence that she's a human, and so don't you feel bad for knowing now that she's a person? I just feel like, what do you mean? I always thought she was. That's why I was annoyed. Yeah, I know what people look like. I don't it's... need the reminder from you. <sighs> yeah, and that's what I mean. It, it's, it's almost condescending. It's just like, yeah, okay. Obviously, I know these I... are people. I know what people... Huh. Uh, if you've been to Epstein Island, this game was made for you. Oh, was too. Oh, uh, can you guys... Wait, can't believe you guys spoiled Spec Ops. I just started that game tonight. Uh, well... <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. I mean, it's an old game. You gotta be... Yeah, this still, you know, it happens. It's kind of hard to make a spoiler rule. The best we usually do is stuff like... A couple weeks. And even then, we're like, if, if, if otherwise labeled or, you know... Warned. Stay away. The, the argument we, I think we pulled up at the time was... Um, there are things that can be spoiled for you and I still, from some of the greats of media that we still haven't consumed, mm -hmm. and it's just like, if they do, um, I don't really blame the person, especially if they've been out for like a decade. Or, you know, 80 years. <laughs> well, those, yeah. <laughs> it's like, especially those ones. Remember when spoilers were for movies in theaters? Um, well, yeah, it seems that... The, the, the there concept is, doesn't uh, change. Like, I still understand it, right? Because the idea, a lot of people will be like, okay, I want to spoil blah, blah, blah. And then I'll sometimes be like, do you have to spoil it to make your point, though? Do you have to? Like, you can just avoid it, right? So you just want to bring up an example and you could just, you know, remove names. And you can still make your point. I'd just be like, yeah, just do that. But yeah. um, sometimes it's just quicker and easier to be like, nah, remember that? Remember when John killed James in, in fucking Flim Flam 4? And you're like, ah, oh, fuck, I was watching Flim Flam 4 tonight. You got movies on Flim Flam 4, be yeah, out soon. Go watch Flim Flam 4, everybody. Sorry about spoiling it. Uh, EFAB villain idea. Spoiler. Oh, he's like a guy who just spoils oh. everything, I guess. Yeah, that's not a bad... That's not a bad idea. What spoiler. An, what an asshole. Fucking spoiler. Um... The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker is post-apocalypse. Hyrule is flooded, and it's a very hopeful and optimistic game. Ooh! That's about the, uh, when, when, uh... Wow, spoiler alert. Cosmonaut was talking about is a post-apocalypse game, it's supposed to make you feel bad. Mm. Which, well... <laughs> not true at all. No. Which is just blatantly not true. Like, a genre is supposed to... Even... Because it's not even a genre. I, I wouldn't even call a Wasteland game or a post-apocalyptic game a genre. Um, I might call it a setting... Yes, uh, because the thing is, if you if I asked you like what genre of movie we're watching, and you said post apocalypse, I'd be like, okay, go on. Yeah, yeah. like I, it's like I, I I can only really I envision more. what it looks like. 
is this a um a, a first person shooter is it an rpg it is a it is it a building management game is it a a simulator of a kind you know you're gonna have to do more than that uh yeah i need i need more to work with here um hardcore so, farmville is the best post-apocalyptic game fuck remember when farmville was like in its heyday i mean i did i think i did mention like you could totally argue that a uh, stardew valley or something is in like a post-apocalyptic world or you could make a game that's like that and it's a very happy game Oh yeah, we're rebuilding society. Everyone's yeah. cooperating and living together, and it's all up from here. And can... once you get over the initial sads of the fact that, you know, there's been an apocalypse, you're like, that's that's okay. We've got each other. We're gonna build a bright future. We're gonna take what happened and learn from it. Um... Wow, Cosmo Friday is so condescending. Yes. Yeah, he is. But don't worry, it's all jokes. Kind of... Why can't I afford Fellowship Grace? Oh man. Walk hole it is, I suppose. Uh, MGS5 is about how Big Boss is working in two places at once. You play as Big Boss's double in game. I, uh. I had. Sure. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, I'm not I sure. I believe if that's... you. Yeah. I, I believe you. <laughs> Look how similar Abby and Ellie are. Too bad the characters never talk and learn this about one another despite having several opportunities to do so. Oh. Well, when I was watching it, the the final fight, I remember just wanting them to talk. Because even, even though the game had pissed me off so much at that point, it's like I'd still be interested to have them fucking know about some stuff that they don't know, but okay. That was obviously like, asking a bit much. Do something that a person would do, please. Oh, that would be great if they did that. Ugh. Again, asking a bit much there. Hey, this remi that reminds me of how in that show we watched not too long ago and we finished the main character had all the evidence that she needed to end the series and they just don't do anything with it um i can't remember i guess it could count as the idiot ball or whatever but just characters not telling people things <laughs> or not using information they have like i would definitely call that uh holding the idiot ball um god it's annoying it is extremely frustrating and, and I think we talked about this before, but Joel not telling any, Ellie anything about the context is one of the primo examples. Fucking baffling. And it makes you frustrated with Joel because you know so he you know that he isn't this stupid. If anything, this is the one point where he would say that sort of thing, and the game is like, eh, no, he just doesn't. Dude, fucking, I'm gonna fight three trolls in a row on, on all columns. That's crazy. Ah, trolls in the dungeon. <sighs> Look how- oh wait, yeah. Uh, hello, Rags. Hey! Hi, how's it going? Things are going alright. Um, things are going okay. It's all- it's all going a okay. Who's a good doggo? Who's the best boy? I- I am. It's- it's me. That's right. Yay. Not you! Revenge of the Sith is great! Get bent! <laughs> okay, first off, no. <laughs> alright. You- no, there was no acties on that. But Revenge of the Sith is no not gives great. No back. <laughs> There, no. All right. You can't do that. You can't take them away from me. <laughs> it doesn't get a special pass. I will have. We we're going to for the moment because we will convince you because we have the movie and stuff on our side. But in the meantime, at least we can agree that it's the best of the original or the the prequels. Oh yes. Easily the best. Fucking mi but. Mr. Mist an attack specifically designed for an Urukai on an Urukai. Like, Barathor, with Aragorn here too, really? I don't know. Wow. He's just not looking to impress. Oh wait, can I actually cleanse them of their tisms? What does this do? Grant full immunity but can't take action. What? What's the point of that? I guess if you needed to protect somebody? Like they had someone charging up over a couple of turns or something? Ooh, cleanse Maybe. shadow, there we go. Cleanse the them of the tisms. The issue is that in this sort of goes back to a lot of turn-based stuff is that it really just comes down to kill the enemy as fast as you can because once you kill the enemy you you're safe Pretty um much. uh it's you don't get that back and forth sort of strategic element in a lot of turn-based games 
it's just it really is just like like in pokemon if all you do is i'm just going to use my most damaging attack all the time you're gonna win the game without any problem and i'm not gonna i'm not and i'm not saying there's no strategy involved like you can strategize it to a degree but we all know that oh you just use your best attack against the whatever you're fighting and you just do that all the time and you win um I love how we're discussing this movie as a film now. Good doggo rags. I, do they mean we're discussing Last of Us 2 as if it was a film, I guess? Um, I mean, narratively, yeah. It's indistinguishable from a movie in terms of just discussing the narrative. Um, the gameplay really just, just also... delays you. <laughs> that's, all yeah. it's, that's all it's doing. It doesn't look fun to play. Brent, I want action points for everyone. Who is that? Uh, full action point. Some action points to buy. There you go. Um, DLC idea. Fat Geralt with an AK-474 charging the WLF's base on a zebra. I'm on. I'm on board with this. I, Interesting. I'm not going to say it's a bad idea because you know what? It's not. I think so. Not a bad idea. Hey, Mola, not to be a shill, but I saw a video from a YouTuber named Neocranium that re-edits The Last of Us 2. Don't know if it's EFAP worthy, but it was cool. Hmm. Um, EFAP worthy is in like it's, it's an improvement. I was going to say, I can't imagine it would be something we wouldn't conclude is improved. So, uh, yeah, good good for them. Good stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You guys see John Wick 5 is confirmed to start production as soon as the fourth is done? I'm so excited, especially after watching John Wick 2 again. Metal sucks. <laughs> They're well, doing the John Wick 5. Oh, John Wick is becoming taken. I mean, I say that, it's already taken. This, where the first one was cool, and then the rest of them are just, you know, it's just like, we gotta make out. more. Yeah, like, guys, it doesn't matter what the IP is, that should be worrying. The fact that they're just like, more, 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 just make more. More, more, more! Oh, no. Um, because that was the benefit, like, that the MCU had was... There's a shit ton of characters, all kinds of stories to tell. So it's like, cool. John Wick is like, he's a man who wants revenge. Again. And again. Yeah, one more time. One more revenge for the road. <laughs> like, I'm right. going to take this extra revenge and put it in my wallet to exchange later for goods and services. Revenge. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm concerned. I will check them out. I um I'm already preparing for tisms. John Wick two and three. Oof. No. Uh, Abby isn't a human being. She's a lizard person. Is there a, is there a deleted scene for that? I don't, know. I don't remember being a lizard person. But I I could believe it. Alex Jones is on the case. So here's the thing about Abby. <laughs> you ever notice how <laughs> you never see her eat? Or sleep, or poop, or do anything that you like. Standard lizard activity. She's just following her programming. She can't not play fetch with a dog. Uh, oh, I'm silenced. Everyone's silenced. This is horrible. I can't believe that the enemies in this game would silence a woman. I know, right? Thanks for keeping me laughing in this tough time as my grandmother died on Tuesday from a stroke. May you massive stay long and high rags. Oh, hello. And uh, sorry to hear that. Um, sorry to hear that happen to you. Yep, that sucks. Strokes, much like many things that murder people, are the big gay. Uh, I hope you're doing alright. Mm -hmm. Princess Bride did it better. You killed my father, prepare to die. I mean, a lot of people... I think we're referencing that after all this happened. It Fallout also helps too. that the guy was evil, so... Oh, that's always helpful, yeah. True. It makes it a lot less conflicting. Um, I'm getting concerned. Chat hasn't moved at all in the past, like, ten minutes. It's it's moving for me. Well, it's frozen on my screen, which is... We got some Fs in the chat, though. Hmm. Hmm. Seems so, yeah, it is definitely moving in real time. But the the stream is up for me uh, when I pull it up, just saying, so... Hmm. But the chat isn't moving, which is concerning. Let me see if his, uh, the links are right. Doing a big concern. Yes. YouTube chat. 
Hello. Yep, that is right. Hmm. Refresh cache. Oh, there refresh we go. Refresh cache? I refreshed the ass and it worked. Oh, yeah. I love a re nice refreshed ass. Mm hmm. Yeah, girl. Um, am I the only one disturbed by the number of people who are okay with Luke becoming a murderer in TLJ? Uh, yeah, it is a little weird. Are we talking about. What, what are we referring to? When he tries to kill Kylo. Well, so he's not a murderer. He, he was almost a murderer. Uh, I mean, he's murdering his heart. I guess, yeah, true. Also, um, I, I imagine people would argue that he's already a murderer. He's killed many people. Um, yeah. Though, I suppose if they're all in arguable self-defense, is it is it murder? No, it's not. Murder, murder is a specific legal definition. Hmm. So, like, when he blew up the Death Star, that was a specifically military installation that was going around blowing up entire planets in, a con in an armed conflict. That's not murder. Yeah. It was... I think it is, you're dumb. I was, uh, I thought so. But yeah, um, him killing a sleeping fucking kid. And it's funny, I saw a conversation with, uh, obviously a, a pro and an, an anti, and they said, like, he was going to kill him because of a bad dream. It's like, no, he was going to kill him because uh, Kylo, he saw, like, the thoughts and, and uh, ideas swirling, the, 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 like, exploring the ideas of possibly killing, you know, people he loves in the future. And it's like, so, like, he was dreaming, and it was, like, a bad dream, and he killed him for it? Is that what you're saying? Hmm. Just like, yeah, sorry. I know that reducing it down makes it sound silly, like you can do with anything, but, um... Obviously, it's indicative of the major point, which is that it's fucking retarded. As long as everyone's following. That's what kicked it all off. Luke Skywalker losing his shit because someone had a bad dream. Think of all the ways you could have justified it so much better. You could have had scenes of him training. And Kylo you know, yeah. being, like, so, an asshole to everyone. Just imagine what it could have been like... Just imagine all the other things they could have done that weren't total horse shit. Like, he's getting angrier and angrier in training, and he, like, hits one of the students for realsies, and then, like, almost tries to go further than that, and then Luke stops him with the Force, and slams him against a wall. You could have, you could have so many good scenes. This is what I mean, it should have been a trilogy. That story should have been a trilogy. Nah, you gotta subvert expectations, just bring it up randomly. <sighs> hmm. Um. Boop, boop, boop. Mola, have you been to the town of Sandwich? No. <laughs> I don't think so. Lunches there. I was gonna say, it sounds like a place I'd want to go just to see what the best of the sandwiches are if they're known for it. Like, imagine a place known for a thing, they're probably gonna be the best at it, right? Or well, pretty, pretty, uh, high up there. What's Welsh, uh, Welshland known for? Um. We're known for not being known for anything. Hmm, that's... Pretty impressive. Except okay. sheep, I guess. We're known for those. Don't you have more sheep than people? I would hope so. They're a better brand of person. I oh, wish my god sheep. His name was Hank Heisenbaggins. Oh, they even got Hank. pointings. Mm -hmm. Hi, gang. Have any of you seen the Battle of Britain? Or Battle of Britain in general? Uh, no. I have not. Sounds interesting. Um, yeah, no, I'd nuke the entire world if it meant my kids would be left alive. This guy's obviously not a parent. Um, that was the point of the first game, was understanding Joel's decision. It wasn't even about necessarily being like, would you have done what he did? Which, by the way, is another whole conversation that people think the answer is very simple on. But, um... <laughs> People argue he did it for selfish reasons because he wanted to have the daughter relationship back, which blows my mind. Like, I think we really need to reevaluate what we consider a selfish decision at this point. Sounds like it's everything. Yeah. Fucking Joel. Selfishly saving a person. I killed the doctors with a flamethrower. I've heard about this. If you kill them with a flamethrower, then of course, The Last of Us 2 can't be canon, so yeah. He wasn't burnt in that cutscene, you know? Have I told you about that? You can shoot him in the foot with an arrow and he, he just dies, or falls over and seems dead. 
Yeah, but it turns out, <laughs> oh, actually. Like, hmm. A very strange. Hmm. Never mind that if Jerry really cared about the cure, he would have handed Ellie over to the government, which would have had way more resources than the Fireflies. That's never addressed. Never addressed. Ne never even talk about it. If all that was in his pure, pure zebra-saving heart was total altruism, you'd think. And they tried. They, they needed to give him a halo. I think that's the part that they missed. Yeah, yeah, I gotta have that imagery in there, that subtle imagery. It's funny we say that as if it's like a full joke, it's like, well, we actually watched a show that did that recently, but, uh, <laughs> let's just ignore that, it's fine. Did you catch the halo? Did you? Mm. Ooh, ooh, hi, Rags. Oh, hello, hello, ooh, ooh. Keep up the great work, long man, destroying the ignorant, misinformed, and the outright lying frauds. Dom bless all the Ewoks. Oh my god. I mean, most of the time it's just uh, incompetence rather than lying. There's, there's not many times on EFAP that I feel we've we've found someone who was definitely lying. It's happened a couple times here and there, though. Like, they'll obfuscate uh, the events of a film to match the point they want to make, sort of thing. It's like, ooh, yeah. you're cheating. Yeah, you're doing a, doing a bad. You must stop this now. You're not being objective. Dun, dun, dun. This is madness. And did you trade in reason for madness? How dare you! Cosmonaut, 1.2 billion. Strawman, zero. Hey, Cosmonaut, is, well, sometimes he struggles with the strawman even, but yeah, he does knock him down. Good for him, you know? He definitely knows he needs to he needs to play the game he's good at. <laughs> he's not even that good at it, but... <laughs> he isn't yeah. even good at. Um, ah, Cosmonaut, questioning why I ever watched his videos more and more. Well... This thing, we have yet to see a good video from him on EFAP, but uh, could happen eventually, one day. Give yeah, it time. You never know. It's not logically impossible. Mm -hmm. It's just alien problem. I am sad to report that Wilfred Brimley is dead. Yup. Yeah. Rest in Lost. power, as they say. Uh, a revenge story done well, rather than The Last of Us, is actually pretty close. Uh, it's kind of a theme in Shad's book, actually. Just went through that a second time. Honestly, and this is not a slight against his book, I think anything can do better than they did because their message is completely backwards and all over the place at the same time as being forward, if you know what I mean. They the, did a very not good. The simple start is going, hey, you know, getting revenge is something that we all experience. Like, we want a sense of justice, but going bloodthirsty almost and taking it too far. It's unbalanced because we're human and we get emotional. Like, that can lead to bad things. It's like, that's, that's your baseline. And they just went nuts. They were like, I was fucking, I don't know, we'll have it so that some characters are rewarded and some aren't, and some preach and some don't, and some stories do and don't. Do, go think of our stuff. Try and connect it all together. I don't know. Yeah, it's a, it's a theme. Does the audience will fill in all the blanks that we don't actually provide. Because I know that there's videos talking about like how incredible it is, the through line of, of what vengeance and violence does to this world. And I'm just sitting there like, Every time, it is destroyed by the fact that had Abby been shot through the fucking head by Joel, that a load of death would have been prevented. And it goes on and on and on. You've got to address that shit in your story. You've got to be like, is this true and what does it say? Like, we, we got to... What, what a character... Uh, is it... What, what is, like, the... The Punisher in terms of, um... Uh, like an RPG role, the character who wants to make like some decisions that are almost evil, but for the greater good, and will often do it. Um, he would, he would probably be a, um, a rogue, or? a a justice obsessed paladin, perhaps. Um, if he was in some kind of a typical uh, tabletop role playing game, um, he would be. I mean, if that was the total goal, um, then it would either be overly strict adherence to a potentially flawed principle or something that's extremely personal to that person where nothing gets in the way hmm. um and an, an enforcer of some kind uh, which i think is actually i know in pathfinder second edition the they're, they're not they're not called paladins anymore they're, they're champions um and they the alignments for each one will correspond to a kind of uh person that they are um so you have 
like a, I, I, I forget which one it was, but one of them is essentially an, an enforcer champion character who's super justice upset. So that's probably what he'd be. I'm almost outside. It wouldn't be lawful because it ex their concept of justice would exist outside the law. Yeah. They just do what they feel is, you know, the best thing to do to carry out justice. Oh no, we're losing Helm's Dorp. Oh, Bar Barathol's getting obsessed too. He's like, we will defend it to our very last breath. And Aragorn's like, yo, come on, you're being silly. I hope Barathol has a good sword. Humanity is shellfish. Cosmonauti variety -tisms. Yes. Oh, whoa, now we're doing a... Th oh, double attack? Hmm. A very tempting. Though I think I'll just go for company fellowship grace, I guess. Oof, Idriel gonna have to cast a lot of spells this time. Ah, Cosmonaut. Oh wait, that's the same one. Questioning why I've watched his videos more and more. I think you sent that in twice, but fair enough. Thanks, yeah. It's, um, worth, it's worth saying twice. I am sad to report wait, that one was sent in as well. How am I? How is this happening? I must have missed one. Oh my goodness. Give me a second, guys. I think I might have accidentally doubled them up. No. We need to grade games on their performance and how well the aesthetics match the gameplay, not the graphic fidelity. Um, I agree. Yeah, the so so I think we went over it with. Uh, I can't remember if this was in EFAP or not, but like you know TF2's style, like that shit didn't age for ages because it's just so. Real for starters. Sorry. It looks real. Looks real. Oh oh, sorry. You said TF2. Yeah. Uh, King Fortress Two. Yeah yeah. Oh, I was thinking of something else. Uh, yeah, it does. It's very stylized. It's a lot... It's like you can go back and play Super Mario World fucking 2. And it's pixelated and it's stylized and it looks great. Um, which is generally one of Nintendo's strengths. And I think that's because a lot of the stuff they want to do is... It, it's very... It's soft. It's not it's supposed to be super harsh and adult-focused. Uh, so they don't, they don't have to make things realistic. Uh also, they're working within the constraints of the power of their systems sometimes, so they know that, you know, we can't make all the polygons, but we could make cute and colorful, standout imagery that's very stylized. And that stuff doesn't age, necessarily. And yeah, and so when you go, I'm gonna go hyper-realistic, and you walk up to a texture and it's like old bloopy, you're like, oof. Hmm. It's, uh, it's a very interesting tightrope to walk. Longman, what was the name of the song in your TFA Critique Park 3? I believe it was at the timestamp. That's not how science works. Wicked Games cover by Ramin Jawadi or Season 3 of Westworld. I believe that is the song. That is the one people always ask me about because it's an awesome song. And it's when I give my um, particularly perturbed speech about how things are going poopy in a, in a couple of ways. Um, for media. Hmm. An idea becomes flawed the second it embarks from your head. Philosopher Fringled 2020 while playing Halo and getting shot in the head. What a noob. <laughs> um, well, the idea, like, the second you start, you take it from concept into, like, forming it into an actual thing, it's probably going to get flawed. Um, if that's what that means. Uh, maybe, yeah. I can, I can see what you're going for here. Which is the best season of Buffy, and why is it season five? Um, because the writing is the tightest and the payoffs are fantabulous, the theming is, 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 is very on point, all the characters have something, they're very all very motivated and completed at that point. If you've been watching up to season 5, you'll find that everybody's got something to do and they're all meshing really well despite being a very big cast. One of the characters goes on very well, I say one of them, a lot of them, it's really good, is, is, is the argument. Who's the worst villain and why is it Adam? That's just, yeah, well, Adam or the Master, but, you yeah. know. Um, and who is the best villain? Why is it the mayor? I can't answer all these questions without being more spoilery tisms, but I agree with all those takes. Oh, good stuff. Uh, fix your mic, Evan. I think that's a reference to how Southpaw's mic wasn't fixed at one point. That was the Toy Story one, right? I think so. So long ago Evan's we discussed yeah. the story of the toy. Even though it doesn't, it kind of doesn't feel that long ago, actually, in, in some ways, you know. It's, it's a weird world. It's a weird world. It's a weird world we live in, where time isn't puttable into a boxable. 
About world design, I feel a great example is Alien Isolation. Every bit of the world besides the ships are able to not only re be returned to, but change as you progress and get new tools. Plus, great for atmosphere. Um, yeah, I think it helps for immersion if your world, the less locks and blocks that there are that, that aren't, um... You know, like, a ship will have its limits, but if you just have loads of doors that you can't go through, it starts to feel a little like, hmm... I guess I'm going this one way. But if, if, if the ultimate blockages are just the ship itself, I don't think it'll feel that bad. Um, but yeah, uh, Alien Isolation's got really strong world design from what I remember. The Third Age for GBA, interestingly, interesting turn-based strategy. It's a lot of fun. Game Boy Advance? At a Lord of the Rings Third Age? Was it like this, but something else, I guess? I oh, know. I remember it. Yes, I had it. Yes, oh I remember it. Oh my God. Um, so... It was really shitty. Um, it was a it was a turn-based game, but it was on like a map and a grid, and characters would move around and do attacks and stuff, and you could give them little upgrades and things. Um, I remember it being really, really shitty and really shockingly unbalanced because um, you'd have good sides and evil sides, and some of the maps were just. I don't. I don't even know what they were thinking, but I, <laughs> I do not have fond memories of it at all. Does it? Is Did it at all like it. this? Or is it like completely different? It was like on a map, on a grid, and people would okay. move around. Yeah. Turn -based I was just trying to think about how, like, yeah, this Game Boy Advance, so the technology just wouldn't be even close to this, would it? Uh, interesting. But but it was a disaster, is what you're saying? <laughs> I mean, I hated it. Uh, I was a kid, though. So maybe I was just not remembering it correctly. Or maybe you'd hate it even more these days. Who knows? Or maybe I'd pr I'd probably hate it even more these days. I, I don't remember being more critical in my youth. Yeah. Maybe not even now, but you know, when I was a kid, I certainly don't wouldn't consider myself a super critical uh, back then. Definitely think I'm more so now. Uh, Mola, please best, EFAP so. my cosmonaut responses. I would love to know how I can improve or what you think of my takes. Um, kind of the same with a couple of things. Uh, we, 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 we pretty much early on decided to avoid the idea of, like, reviewing anyone's anything. Because there's no feasible way to have that work. And, uh, you know, like, in a way that's fair for anybody who wants to ask. And time is limited. And then, of course, there's the awkward element of, like, reviewing someone's work... Who's who's a, who's asked as a fan? You know, it can it can it can make it hard to be objective, as as one might say. Mm. But um, main reason would be like, say someone did that, and then we did it, and they were really happy with it, and then someone else is like, "Can you do it for me too?" And then we're like, "Oh, we can't right now because we're busy, but we'll put it in like a queue." And then three more people are like, "Do it for me as well, and me, and me, and me." And we're just like, "Uh oh, what have we done? Mm. What have we done? Oh no, no, no." No, 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 no. <laughs> Fat Geralt saved the zebra to feed it to a tiger, which he also saved. Aww. How nice of him. For the tiger, I mean. Rags, I hope you know I've made up all the super chats in the past half hour out of sheer boredom. None of those were real. I don't know which ones that's referring to. <laughs> Um, it was probably the ones that were talking about how Revenge of the Sith is actually good. Oh, and that's so they're not... like, ah, I gotcha. That's getting... not the same account, but... <laughs> oh. Maybe they want to say that about every the ones that have all just been sent in. That's, maybe that's it. Maybe. Uh, ever notice how Elagost looks a bit like Druckmann? Oh my god. That explains it. Hmm. That explains it. Um... If Mauler were to read 23 years worth of One Piece content, how long do you think the analysis would be? Oh. I think, uh... That's for a longer man than I, you know? All I've ever known about One Piece is that it's just huge. Which is funny, because it's all in one piece, right? <laughs> I don't get it. Oh, like the name of it is One Piece? I wonder if that name is still relevant. To, like, whatever, whatever the reason it's called that, I wonder if that's still a thing in the storyline. You know, like, Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Like, thousands of years later, they continue the the thing, it's still called Lord of the Rings, even though rings are just, like, not relevant at all. And you're like, well, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, rings? Oh, those are old news. Those old antiques are shit. We made our own. Everyone's got a ring now. If someone jumps in on season 704, and they're like, why is this called Lord of the Rings? You're like, oh, you have to go watch season one. It makes sense. 
Eh. Um, also check out Vinland Saga. Imagine if Arya Stark's arc from Game of Thrones, but it's actually good. Laugh my fucking ass off. It's on Amazon Prime and only one season. Hmm. How dare you. Everyone loved Arya's non-arc. Why isn't Aragorn with me? Ooh. I'm currently playing. Are you with me, Aragorn? 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 I'm not trying to rob you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently playing Stalker. If you wound a bandit without killing them, there's an option to interrogate them for the location of their stash. Yet people are impressed by the useless surrenders. Yes! That's what I mean. It's, it's not so even. Simple. Like, that's what I mean, it's not even that hard, it's not but a it's... complex thing, yeah. It's not even complex of a mechanic to do. But it's good. It's cool. Do it, cowards. If you, if you give people a mechanical reason to kill everybody all the time, that's what they'll do. Like, this is... I've never made a video game. I've played a shit ton. And this is just basic design 101. If it's if if it's nothing but advantages, then you're gonna have to come up with something really appealing to get the player go against those advantages. Players wanna win. Oh no, Barathol's going nuts. Ah! Oh no, movie clips. <laughs> 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 Your treachery is far worse than that of the worm. Born to forge my army steel. Um, Free Fab 100, can you please cover Brown Table's video on Transformers the last night? The tism is strong with that one. Also, hola, El Ragos. Hola, senor! Um, from what I've heard, Brown Table has videos where he ironically defends a film. And, uh, the last night was one of the ones that he wanted to do, so I don't know if it might be a- it might be a troll. Look out for that. Also, that would require Mahler and myself. To watch, to watch Transformers The Last Night? Well... Oh no, Idril died. Dude, that's what? not even fucking fair. They, they, the game starts by being like, you've got a fucking thing to, to fight. And I'm like, okay. You don't get first turn, of course, because uh, you don't have the speed for it. And I'm like, okay. And they just killed your resurrection champion. I'm like, oh. Lucky I have. No, turn-based games are great. <laughs> okay, well, I don't even know how to fix that, to be honest with you, because, like, I, I guess I like the idea of speed being mechanically, like, a thing you can level up and stuff, but then again, like, this shit shouldn't be able to happen, surely. Yeah, if speed just becomes the statistic that only means this is what prevents an enemy from going first and insta-killing you, then you're like, I'm not doing it to go first, I'm doing it to just not get wiped before I even have a chance to do anything. Because when it comes to speed... As long as you're one point higher than the enemy, anything else that you have in speed is just a waste. Yeah. I suppose it's future-proofing. I don't know. You have to... Like, if, if you have a game where um, you have speed... Like, some statistics will... If it gets to a threshold, it lets you do X, which is, like, going first. But for every points you have above that threshold, you can do extra thing. Or if you succeed a roll by... Uh, like 10 or something, then it's like a critical version of itself. So, yeah. Marathon. Stuff to consider. No. Belch. Oh gosh, they all went for him. Down he oh, goes. Man. Yep. Um. Doo -doo. I was convinced reviews aren't paid, but Sony contacting Vice for their critical Last of Us 2 review has me suspicious and back to unsure. Thoughts? Um, so, yeah. Welcome to the club. Uh, but also, when it comes to The Last of Us 2, there's a lot of tisms, like how reviewers were told they weren't allowed to reveal the Abbey stuff. Mm. And that really pissed off a lot of people when they played it. And if I was a game reviewer and I was told, especially if I was a reviewer and I focused on that stuff and I knew from the advertising that... Um, people wouldn't know because i would consider the last of us two false advertising um i feel like it, it fits up. yeah i i think it i think it does fit the bill of false advertising um that is that should kind of be the big controversy happening sort of but it gets swept 
under the fact that the game was so terrible and horrible um, and unsatisfying and nonsensical. But the idea that a company says, oh yeah, you can review the game, because I understand why review embargoes exist and I'm fine with them. Uh, in fact, they're, I think they're good as a concept. Review embargoes are good for like time limits and stuff. However, when those are given under the stipulation of you cannot give away these extremely important and relevant details about a game that people are about to pay $60 for, that is an issue. Um, and as for paid, so we're expecting evidence where someone goes, here is the contract, I will give you a million dollars, and you will say, the game is amazing. Sign. But um, I think it's always going to be a little bit more careful than that. For example, the, the standard one where Rags is making his movies in Hollywood, and I'm just some reviewer, and he's like, hey, you review stuff. How about we give you uh, an early viewing so you can get your review out? And I'm like, oh, you want, like... You want a particular kind of review? And you're like, no, 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 just, you know, review it as you feel, you you know, whatever. And I come there, and you're like, hey, meet star of movie. And I'm like, whoa, hey. And he's like, hey, how you doing? Did you, did you like the movie? And he's like, oh, I haven't seen it yet. And he's like, oh, I hope you do. You know, we worked really hard on it. And you're like, oh, my God. And then, and then Rags puts me in this, like, five-star hotel, wine and dines. And then I finally see it in a huge theater with the cast. And, and then I go to a cast party afterward, and everyone's having a great time. It's like, did you like the movie? And I'm like, I, 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 I guess I did. You know, I had some fun. It was good shit. And I put my review out. I'm like, that was good shit. And then next year, I'm like, I hope they invite me again. But... And when reviewers do that, it's not necessarily malicious. Like, they know they're doing something bad. I think there's a lot of people who are very thin-skinned and unwilling to engage in conflict with people. So when they are treated in that way, they, in their minds, see it as returning a favor that was given to them by reviewing the game positively even though that's not what you should do and that isn't right a lot of people see it in their minds as doing you know repaying one kindness with another that that's how they might see it in their heads um and what are reviews yeah, I, them in their world but just saying how you felt this is how i felt and if they're feeling good about all that then they're being honest they're feeling good and that's why the whole the, the like framework that we have couldn't necessarily be affected by something like that. Not that we would do it anyway. I mean, if Disney offered Rags and I to go to Hollywood and hang out for a week and then go see the movie, I'd be like, oof. Mm. I feel like we could do it and still be totally objective about the movie. I would probably... In fact, we would be confused as to why they sent us, why they got us. Well, that's, that's, that's where my mind goes immediately. I'm like, are you doing this because you don't like what we're saying and you want to try and make us a little... I feel, if I was Disney, the only reason they would contact EFAP is if they legitimately felt like they actually made a really good Star Wars thing, or whatever, and they were that confident that it would pass our test. I mean, I, as long as we could record it all, I probably would. And, uh, again, what I was trying to say, though, is with the framework, it wouldn't matter how, uh, how, how much fun we had, because there'd be references that are provable, right? We, we, we'd get fucked if we were to try and pretend like certain things didn't happen. Like if some people yeah, watch I'm the not film. such a shut-in loser who never goes anywhere that I would treat this as a once-in-a-lifetime kind of thing to take a trip someplace, and it would totally <laughs> color my entire opinion on the What if the they movie? gave you lobster in a big room <gasps> with... Okay, to be fair, there's not a lot of lobster here in Arkansas, yeah. so... And, and what if, if you you're, met... If you're going to bribe me with something, money and seafood might be a way to... Uh, you get to get... meet Daisy Ridley. What about that? I just like, you like, go back um, in time and teach us about movie criticism? I just like the idea that they sell that to you, it's like this huge thing, and you're like, Oh, hello. How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, Daisy. Because I would just, I would want, she, I would see Daisy Ridley, and probably John Boyega and Oscar Isaac to a greater degree. Potentially. Mm -hmm. But I would want to get their insight into the production. Oh, I'd want to ask some questions, happened. yeah. Yeah, I, I don't give a shit about what it's like being a star. I really don't give a fuck. I want to know, what was it? What, what, what was Ryan and JJ? What was their attitude? What, what did they say? What did they do? How did they act? What amount of meddling happened between Disney and what these people wanted? You know, what were these discussions? That's what I want to know. I want some insider information into the process of creating these films. Well, imagine as well, Austin, yeah. like, have you ever felt your character was out of character in terms of the writing? And what would you do in that scenario? What have you done? 
do you ever speak up? Do you ever complain? Or do you feel as though it's not your place? You know, I guess some... Yeah, like as an actor, do you feel like you have a implicit sort of uh, job to defend what you believe your character is? So yeah, um, back to the, the question, I guess. Uh, the idea of, like, our reviews paid for, there's different degrees. Um, an outright contract that just says review it positively and we'll give you money. I'm not sure those exist. Uh, they could, but the implicit ones that are like, hey, want to hang out with us next year? And you're like, yeah, and it's like, well, you know. Someone said they wouldn't, they wouldn't say the truth. So it depends on who else is with us and whether they trusted us if we told them we'd keep it a secret. Because if... If I told them, I promise I'll keep it anonymous, or I won't tell anyone, well, then I that, would though. I would stay true to that promise. You've also got um, the, you know like that clip I had in TFA Part 3 where it's, they ask her why her hair is stupid color, and then she says, I think it says, like, I think it's, it's tied very much to her character, and then it just, Oscar Isaac just smirks. Like, yeah. that's the kind of shit <laughs> I would be looking out for. Where they go, yes. yeah, I've always felt my character is totally um, in line, and then I go, you know, you, you you can ask them all. You just you just looking for those little little details in how they answer questions. Yeah, because they're still human, and they still have those tells. They there's still a character in them, and you know something's good. There there is something's going on in their brain that makes them smirk, mm -hmm. and you just want to you just want to get it confirmed. You just want to say, yeah, I I think we I think we're on the same page, Oscar. I think what's fucking going on. Well, yeah, and then I'd immediately want to talk to Oscar about all of his indie films and many of the ones that I love. I'd probably want to immediately be like, "So, what is your like? What is your aspiration as a, as, a, as, a, so, as an actor?" Tell me what it was like to work on Annihilation. <laughs> oh no, I'm sure he has very good things to say about that compared to Star Wars. Oh yeah, but he was fine in Annihilation. I imagine he's got very neutral things to say about Star Wars. He's like, "It's fine. I'm not going to do it again." <laughs> he probably, yeah, he probably. It's probably just a lack of passion as time yeah. went on. Like I can imagine, after TFA, they were, they were, pumped, and excited, and now they're just like, I don't know. Uh, watch, weird. watch Violet Evergarden rags. I have heard good things about that one. Violet Evergarden. Mm-hmm. Is that an anime? Yes. Yeah, I could tell because the name's fucking nonsense. Hey. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, uh, I haven't seen Violet Evergarden. What's the weirdest like? Wasn't she that? The, wasn't she the protagonist of uh, the Hunger Games, Violet Evergarden? Oh, fuck! Is it Evergreen? Something Evergreen? Ever? Uh, I used Katniss Evertisms. Katniss something. It's Katniss. I know. Katniss. That. What a yeah. terrible name. Um. But yeah, I mean. What you level know. of Katniss are you on, my dude? Love you, Mola. Curious. Are you ever going to make an Unbridled Rage video for Game of Thrones Season 8 finale? Um, so, after I'd made, like, the fifth episode one, I really felt like I'd basically gone after all of the characters, and, um, as much as there's a lot to say in terms of... So, like, the final episode, there's a lot of things to criticize, but, th like, 65% of the episode is actually just nothing burger. Because it's just walking. Oh, yeah, you did the whole, yeah, the... You, you, the non-dialogue sequences you Which showed. is insane padding for the fucking finale of this eight-year beloved TV show. It's crazy that they did that, but okay. Walking around quietly, stewing. It's, it's artistic, you don't understand. You don't understand, okay? Um, uh, Eva Dean, that's her surname. Eva Dean. Uh, Violet Evergarden? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, so, so I, was, I, was, I was thinking about doing it, then other projects came up, and then I thought to myself, if I was going to do that episode, I'd want to talk about why everything is bad from like a series point of view at that point. Kind of how I did in the other episodes, but then I was like, actually, that would be a good opportunity to throw in criticisms I have for like other things. So Stannis' death, Stannis killing his kid, uh, Barristan's death, the fuck-up of Tyrion and Tywin's ending, um, Varys's Oh, I covered Varus's death already. Littlefinger's death, that was the one I was thinking of. Um, lots and lots and lots of things. And I was like, maybe if I do a Game of Thrones retrospective one day, though it's perpetually in my list of things to do in a, in a place that fluctuates because of the fact that it would be a huge project. We're talking like possibly a year of production because it would have been eight seasons of content to get through and to figure out what I want to say and how to structure it, so... 
Um, things to happen in the future, possibly. Not 100% sure if I'm going to do it, though. Oh, did my whole team just die? Fuck. Oh, no. That resets. Just use your magical necromancy powers and bring people back to life. You don't and... understand. You don't understand. That, that resets. I wasn't paying attention. I could have done that, but that resets everything we've done on this stream today. What? Because <laughs> the saving system mean? is garbage. What? Yep, that's what it said. Everything we've done today has now been reset. Um... It's, some games didn't know how to do uh, difficulty back in the day. This is one of them. It was like... Wow! I don't know. Like the you, Holy fuck! You're playing on hard... Funny enough, it has nothing to do with hard or easy even. It's literally just the fact that this is how the saves work. So, um... Yeah, I, I would have stopped playing. If that was me, I would have just been done. <laughs> I would have just done something else. That was like an hour and a half of time that's just down the toilet now. I was like, damn, okay. That's what I happens so, yeah. when you forget to apply Aura of the Valor, okay, people? That's why they put it in the game, to protect you against their <laughs> shitty death system. Instead of just making up more save points or letting you, God forbid, well, save whenever you wanted. Here's an you idea. can't do that. There's something um, uh, called a checkpoint. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Uh, a checkpoint? Yeah, so it's like saving, but not really. And what it means is, you will go back to that point in the game as long as you don't turn the game off entirely. Saves are for when you've turned the game off and you can come back after turning it back on. It's really cool. I don't know if they introduced in... them in 2020, I think, checkpoints? Um, never heard of them. They sound horrible. Uh, it'll mm -hmm. never work. It's probably, if, if anything, it's probably just a passing fad. Um, Never heard of them. I Sounds remember sad. in some games they would do a like a continue sort of mode, where I think this was in one of the what, one or two of the Final Fantasy games I played. You would continue, like you would you would do like a quick save or a, a quit, and you could resume the game from that point, but. You, if you played the game, it had to be that file. You had to click the resume option because you couldn't just save the game as your save file. Mm -hmm. What you had to do was you had to... It's like a temporary save. And if you didn't use it the next time you played, it was totally lost. Um, instead of just having it be a save. And I don't know what the reasoning was behind it. I don't know if it was a limitation on the memory... Which I highly doubt, because you had all kinds of games like, um... Uh... I'm coming to mind at the moment, because it's because I'm trying to think back to Game Boy Advance games from my youth. But, um... You know what's yeah, I'm sure... spook silly about this game as well? It seems to me that you get more XP the more time you spend in battles, rather than the enemies you're defeating. In terms like... of, like, a clock and a timer, or in turns? Um, could be, well, it could be either of them for all I know, because that would, they would correspond pretty closely, I'd imagine. Uh, well, sort of, yeah. The, it just, it just, like, because I just wiped out that team pretty quickly because of perfect mode, and then I got, like, a fucking speck of, of, of XP, and it's like, I guess using perfect mode means you don't get the XP for killing these enemies, even though they're still the enemies, I don't know. A little bit, like, it's not fun in video games when they do that, because you're just like, oh. Yeah, the idea of... Getting experience can be... It's been done in a million different ways across many different games. And uh, there's always pros and cons to a lot of stuff. If you have... Um, like, you, you get more experience the more you do of a thing. Well, it seems more natural, but it can also be abused. But, you know, it, like, like, if you, like in Skyrim, right? Theoretically, in Skyrim, you could level up stealth to, like, 100 before you even leave the tutorial cave, right. as far as I'm aware. Um, it's just a matter of, is that so time-consuming and unfun that that's, that's the, uh, the meta barrier that prevents people from doing it, you know? Yeah, and I think the same thing applies to this game, but it would be, we're talking absurd shit, like, to get to the highest levels, it would take, like, thousands of hours or something, something like that with the yeah, earlier yeah, enemies. Yeah. That would be its own, yeah, its own barrier. Which so they do that in South Park. The system. To defeat the hacker. Yeah. Um, also, I, I'm, in fact, I'm playing uh, Seven Days to Die casually as we as we talk, and in Seven Days to Die, they used to have a system of experience where you would level up certain things that you did by doing them, 
So if you wanted to craft really good, let's say, um, uh, bows, right? If you wanted to, if you wanted to make a bow and arrow, in order to craft them better, you would craft bows. So you would go out and get a bunch of wood and the stuff you needed to make a bow, and you would literally make dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of bows overnight. And then you'd have all these bows in your inventory, and you would just be constantly making bows and scrapping them and making bows and scrapping them hundreds of times to level up your bow-making skills so you could eventually make better and better bows that did more damage. They eventually changed it because that is shit to have to do that. Uh, but this goes to show there's a lot of um, and, and there's yeah in, in chat they're already talking about the iron daggers in Skyrim uh, that how a meme it's become to just make iron daggers over and over and over in massive quantities to level up your blacksmithing uh, <laughs> that's because the people who made Skyrim not they had a lot of lot of tism a lot of stuff with Skyrim that just is mm, uh Hmm. But yeah, there's a lot of different. That's um, why in, in tabletop role playing games, I prefer like when the party levels up. I don't like the idea of giving XP as points based on like how many monsters you kill and things of that nature. But every so often, you level up based on just stuff that your party sort of does. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. Game take. If you ever actually do Bionicle stuff, please get Nick on Planet Ripple for it. Salutations, Rags. Hello. Uh, sorry if this is a duplicate. No, no, it's all good. Uh, we haven't actually... I don't think we plan to do Bionicle stuff, but I don't see why we wouldn't, you know? Yeah, um, I can't think of any reason why we couldn't, I suppose. Bionicle's pretty cool. It's like... It's like Nichols, but... But biology. That's, that's what they combined to make Bionicle. It's pretty cool. Bioengineered. Mm -hmm. Modder gunpowder is called smokeless powder and is different from black powder. Black powder is too dirty for an AK. You'd have to clean every few rounds. Um, yes. So in old stuff especially, black powder did burn very dirty and you would have to constantly clean your weapons because um, you have to do this with modern firearms but to much less of a degree. Um, one of the big differences though is... Uh, is the pressure. You can put old powder in new guns and shoot them, but if you put new powder in old guns because there is a pressure difference, the powder burns much, much quicker, so the, the, there's a difference in how the pressure is created within the, the firearm. It can damage and destroy the firearm because of that. Um, in fact, if you have an old firearm but you want to get modern ammunition for it, then that modern ammunition will use um, sometimes modern components, but they will burn at lower pressures, or they will burn slower, uh, so it doesn't damage the fire. <laughs> what the fuck? Well, that res at full health is OP. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, welcome to the third <laughs> age, my friend. It's funny because I was like, are you aware of the other move I have, where I can put it on automatic? Like, it's, it's pretty broken, but it, this game's got lots of issues in that regard, I'm afraid. Uh, the EFAPers, more than meets the paws, the Objecticons wage their war to de destroy the evil forces of the Subjectabots. EFAPers, roll out. I mean, that combines many different uh, good and bad all over the place, but yes, I would hope the bad guys win in that allegory, you know? Because, uh, gotta, gotta stamp out those Subjectabots. More than meets the eye. Um, I don't know if you guys talked about it or not, but would the game would the game better if it was pure revenge is good story? Oh, would the game be better if it was pure revenge is good story? Um, um it would be more appropriate. Um You could do it. Cuz here's the <laughs> thing. Sometimes like that like it's like it reminds me of that phrase cheaters never prosper. So that's a fucking lie. <laughs> um for starters. Well, you know, you know who that's meant that, for, right? It's but... meant for the cheetahs. It's like, hey, cheetahs, you'll never pause, but the cheetahs are like, I don't know. Well, that's the thing. You like, just like, try to convince um, me not to do it. It's it's like being a really good smuggler, you know? If you're really good at it, no one will ever know. 
Yeah. Cheating is the same way. If you cheat and prosper, people just don't know about it. So you only know about the cheaters that you've caught. Um, what was the original super chat? <laughs> so, <laughs> the idea of like, if the story was all about... Well, revenge is good. I would rather change that to what can happen as a result of revenge or vengeance-fueled actions um, that, yeah, that can um, lead to positives. Exactly. What is your... What is revenge worth? What is the cost of, you know, your emotional catharsis? And here's the thing. When it comes to stuff like that, a lot of things you can explore. Oh, and that wasn't... To explore. That wasn't us endorsing cheating. It, 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 contextually, oh, cheating yeah. can be I'm a just saying, horrifying thing to do the... and also an innocuous thing to do. Like, it's depends on what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's, it's similar in the idea that people will say, well... You know, revenge never pays off because you want to warn people against going too far and the stuff that happens along the way of seeking revenge and how it can consume you and stuff of that nature. But man, sometimes people get revenge and it is so fucking sweet and it's amazing and they'll <laughs> well, say it's the best thing they ever done and they say it made them a better person. The standard sort of storyline you do, which loads of properties do this, one that we watched last night does it, but you want to get revenge on a particular target and someone who is a good person stands in your way and so you decide it's worth killing them to kill that other person. It's like, uh-oh. Yeah, now, yeah, that's a... Uh... And that's, uh, yeah, that's the... That's a... Yeah, and, and Last of Us 2 doesn't really... <laughs> Last of Us 2 has you kill like 200 people and then it's, it's... like, hey, don't kill her. You're like, okay. For a game that is Fucking clearly absurd. meant for very mature audiences, it, the message is delivered in an extremely juvenile and overly simplistic way. Yeah. That doesn't really make any sense once it's examined. Because, it, in fact, it's a great way to explain to people who talk about themes that themes are, you know, super important and stuff. Is just, in your head, on the fly, just say, well, here's a story about a person who goes on revenge, and they have a great time it's fun it's enjoyable they find a lot of riches and treasure along the way they find a love of their life they, they save a whole bunch place. of people yeah their, their journey takes them to a place where they do a lot of good for people you it's easy to fabricate a story that's totally realistic and believable and makes sense about how a well, journey for revenge leads only to amazing and good things the last was and two then accidentally say, oh, does yeah, it but at the end it... they say the message is that revenge is like bad the Last of Us 2 does the thing where it's like, she goes to kill Abby and she ends up saving Lev and Abby's lives. It's like, um... What game? I'm getting confused now. <laughs> yeah. You would think that a if you're gonna have your thing be about how revenge is bad, show that revenge is bad. Like, man, in the pursuit of revenge, lives were rescued and protected. You're like, okay, so you're saying revenge is, like, good sometimes? And the game's like, no. And you're like, oh... But the good things happening on screen, no. Uh, you gonna believe what we tell you, or you're next lying? Doo 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 doo. Uh, that one's blank. God of War 2018 analysis. When? That's another one of those ones that's in my big list that fluctuates in terms of priority. We were talking about Hill House a little bit a couple of days ago, and I was like, oh man, I really do want to do something on that as well. That show's cool. There's so many things I want to talk a, about. Give it a shocking five minutes of commentary? Oh, wow. what am I, a professional reviewer? No. I might ramble on about it in an unedited, unscripted, nonsense video that's like ten hours long. I might do that, but oh, I, I wouldn't. Oh, no! Four minutes... Do you think I am so talented that I can concisely explain my position on Hill House in four minutes? I am not that talented, okay? I wish I were. I wish I could talk about the creator's other things that he's done. I wish I could talk about how I watched it at night and it was spooky. <laughs> Those are the kinds of things you say for a four minute, okay? Spooky, but it's not, but kind of? Yeah, do that, but don't do that, but do it. Um, can you objectify an end? Yes. Yeah, you could imagine it as a table. You could, you, well, you could be like, look at that, look at that, and boobies, and the, the girl ends like, the fuck? I am... Well, if the whole idea of objectification is to, I guess, reduce somebody to some... <laughs> I mean, some useful thing to you, uh, then... Removing yeah, the it, humanity It wouldn't have to subject. be sexual. Well, you could just be appreciating the shapely, the, the shapely boobs. You know, it doesn't have to be sexual. You should be like, you know, those are, those are biologically well... 
suited for um, the uses that may be had for them. Uh, I am simply observing that. And they're like, hey, there's a person attached to these. And you're like, oh, well, you know, okay, fine. I'm just saying. Just point it out. Jeez. I mean, ultimately, if, like, when we're, because this, this pops up with the whole objectification women thing. Um, a thought, in and of itself, doesn't do anything bad, you know? It doesn't, um, like, unless you What do if you said it out loud, it, though? That's when you've broken the law. Oh. Um, but yeah, if you call it an, a tree, no, sorry, an, an a table, or you say you make a good table, that's offensive, and you should do that. Can you, you call ins triggers? Yes. <laughs> I've been carving a tree into triggers and then triggering them. Or in, in, in putting the trigger on a flamethrower oh, that you no. use to, <laughs> to burn down. A wooden <laughs> flamethrower, I feel like there'd be issues with that, baby. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's it's no more absurd than like a wooden furnace, you know. That's the thing they did. They did that, um, and it worked very well. And you didn't understand it. That was your problem. What if all of the village catching fire? Totally <laughs> unrelated accident because of just the fact that they lined their furnaces with wood. <laughs> you know. It, some people call that a mistake. I call that ingenuity, and it was an experiment. Do we really? Are hey. We gonna, we gonna punish people for experimenting? I don't think so. What are we gonna What are we gonna use to hold all these hot ass fucking coals in this furnace from uh, you know spilling out all over our wood and straw houses? I'm like I don't know, wood. We should fucking brilliant, Carl. Yeah, I mean, you know, he knows what's up. Also, Gosh, look at this. I got to do it better this time. If I knock out the two sides first, then I'll have to deal with the troll on its own. I'm a genius. Oh, yeah. The game was trying to teach you all along that you should have done things that you couldn't have known to have done before. Yeah. It's Dark so <coughs> You You say this. I, I, I feel like we're going to have to have a conversation about that one day, because I don't... Unless you're targeting certain bosses, you're wrong. Like, Bed of Chaos is what you're describing, but that's one boss. Talking about something... I don't even know anything about anything. <laughs> Dark Souls is beastly when it comes to teaching the player. It's what, a, what would be where I would go to for examples. I don't know anything about Dark Souls. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, in Bruges for next EFAP movies, I I, I heard I, it's I, good. Yeah, I, I do intend to show you that. Uh, give me give me ten years. I'll get around to it. Um, based EFAP, of course. Mm hmm. Hello, long man. Hello. Hello, rags. Hello. What advice would you give to an aspiring sci-fi fantasy author? What might help the world stand apart from others in your mind? Um, Oof. one thing to do is I would suggest one key piece of technology or one key system that is by design extremely important and world-changing, but it is recognized as that. Um, so... I guess, it, I'm trying to think of an example. If you're going with fantasy, a type of magic or a type of material that is extremely, that has these very unique properties, um, but it's treated in universe with a lot of respect and value. Um, it isn't just shrugged off as, oh, it's just a thing that we have. Um, if you, it, it, like, maybe the ability to... Well, take any spell, some high-level spell from a tabletop role-playing game or a video game, and actually imagine, like, if I actually could bring people back from the dead for ten minutes, five minutes, or just one minute, something like that, how would that change the world if everybody knew that was actually a thing that you could do? What would the rules be associated with that? Who could do it? In what circumstances would that be allowed? Um, what if you actually could have people... I mean, I think The Witcher is a... Uh, in the sense that magic is real and everybody knows about it, and it's extremely powerful, and everybody knows this, it impacts how magic is treated within that universe and the attitude people have towards it. If you're going to introduce something, just justify it in-universe with everybody's the way that they interact with it and understand it. 
Yeah, if we're going from or because the obvious stuff is like keep everything in fucking check, you know, make everything make sense, everything's working as intended. From there, the more things, the more crazier ideas you come up with that are still maintained consistently wise, the more your world will probably be tempting to a to a reader. Like, oh, this is a world where blah 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 blah. Also blah blah blah. Also blah blah blah. Also blah blah. blah. You're like, ooh. Um, for example, a world where it's just like, in the future, people don't leave their houses. A couple of things have done this, um, and instead they walk around with avatars instead, or surrogates, as the film was called that I saw. That I, I was think... just thinking about surrogates. Fuck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, like literally, as you were talking, I'm like, oh, surrogates would be a good example. Well, that's yeah. Uh, and you said it. Um, and so, so you could be like, that's the world, uh, times by, you know, uh, you can upload your own mind digitally if you want to. I think, funnily enough, what was it called? Transhumanism? The, the one we, we they called it in uh, well, years yeah, and years? Yeah, this is, um, Ghost of the Shell's a fantastic that example too. of how do you create a world in, in Deus Exes as well. Um, introduce robotic bodies, robotic body parts, the ability to upload your consciousness digitally to things. That has a huge impact on the world and the world is shaped by that. Mm -hmm. And it's the center for a lot of different conflicts. If you do that, then people will believe it's a part of the world because people are reacting to it in a reasonable way. Yeah, and then you can um, times that by um, there's, there's an under a species that have invaded, like an alien species that we're currently at war with. That uh, that are like only slightly more advanced than us, or something like that, and they're the neighboring galaxy, and there's just a consistent thing happening with that, and then you times that by there's uh, you know, you, do you get what I mean? Like the, all these like multipliers of, of just crazy shit that's happening in your world. But the problem is, every single time you add a layer, the harder it is to make your world like stable, because the amount of things that change, the amount of complexities that are added, and the amount of times you'll be like, wait. This is a thing, but it wasn't this a thing, and then you're like, oh shit, fuck, right, because you want to have all these yeah, cool things at once. It's, it's so, I imagine in the writing process, a lot of rules for the universe are invented on the fly. That doesn't mean they're necessarily bad. Well, to give you an uh, example, Lupa is a world that's like, time travel exists, and they use it to kill people. You're like, okay, also telekinesis is a thing. And it, it always felt to me like I was like, why? Yeah, remember, telekinesis was a thing. Um, and it comes up right at the end. It's just so that they could have... Yeah, the only reason it exists is to be like, oh yeah, this is how this one guy could be responsible for all this stuff that the plot revolves around. He's gonna because fucking, I bet a lot yeah. of people forget that telekinesis exists in Looper when they think about that movie again. Mm -hmm. And you'd be forgiven for doing so, because it's almost forgotten until it needs to be in service of the yeah, so it's, a, it's a bit of a weird one, and so you'd want it, so not only to add these things, but not just for the cool factor, like, oh, in my world, there are Knights of Byzantium, and you're like, whoa, whoa, what do they do? And you're like, they, uh, they're they just they're just these sentinels, there's one per country, and they, they're they like a race that were gen genetically made, they, they're they just really cool, okay? And you're like, okay. Like <laughs> this seems really weird. I don't know. Uh, what I'm talking about there is like half baked ideas that on the surface seem really cool. Yeah. Um, here's Knights of Ren is obviously um, inspiring what I just said. What? I wouldn't have guessed. Um, the, um, the name I just recognized though, I think that's actually in Buffy, but um, moving on. Carry on. <laughs> so, um, an example of doing it very poorly is there's, this is topical for me is uh, the tracking fobs in The Mandalorian. Hmm. Those are created by that show to serve as a really shitty way of having things happen, but they create huge problems in universe. Huge problems in universe. Huge if you go through the trilogy of Star Wars and think of how how useful it would be to essentially invisibly and indetectably track people and things across the galaxy. Huh. That that would that would totally change the plot of Star Wars and they just haphazardly introduce it into the Mandalorian. And someone's just brought up like uh get your foot in the door and you'll get it after they say Stephen King even now his books are man, I don't I don't know if the part of the point of that was like you can you can spill out your ideas and then craft them and uh you know like a sculpture sort of thing. And I'd be like, "Oh yeah, totally on board with that." But the thing that should have been realized with with redrafts with Mandalorian um would have been like, "Damn, it's really hard for us to like maintain this fucking tracker 
without it, like, fucking other things up. And then someone should have been like, how about we just don't have them? How about we do something else? Because the whole reason we brought yeah. them in is so that Mando can get to Yoda. And it's like, let's yeah, just... Yeah, how about bounty hunters actually, like, hunt Yeah, let's bounties. just do that. And we can we can make it, like, guys, we can make it so he's really good at his job because we're following him specifically forbid, for that. Yeah. What if, uh, or, or just, it's easy, just put limits on the trackers. Get with have there be ways to get rid of them? Which is, by the way, never something that pops up a single time in the show, is how do we get rid of it? They don't even mention it, which leads us to believe reasonably that it cannot even be done, don't even bring it up or mention it. Um, huge, huge, huge problems with Star Wars because of trackers, and it ain't a nitpick just because the show doesn't treat them with the importance they should be treated well. with. Doesn't we'll be keeping an eye out for them in season two because I wonder if we'll be added. Like, I'm very concerned about season two, but we've said that before. I oh, absolutely. Th I think it's going to only get, make it ever, everything worse. It's going to provide even more contradictions. Trackers can be turned on and off from the bounty hunt quest log. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have lost all respect for you, Mola. How embarrassing! Choosing to be blinded by hate. I have never thought of you of more as more of an idiot than right now. Your criticism, your critiques are poor. <laughs> your crit <laughs> the end is great. Just that poignant. Your critiques are poor. <gasps> no. It's so scathing. They are poor. You're like, oh. Uh, J. Rally brings up a good point. Have the basically have them be very short range. Like, yeah, sure. have them be very short range because for one. That creates that that gets rid of a lot of universe problems they cause, but also too, if you're just going by beep noises, it can only work within short range. Imagine playing the hot and cold game on a galactic <laughs> scale. You're like fuck off. It's like rags, I have checked ninety percent of the universe has been cold. You're like, well, it must be that ten percent, I guess. You have to. You would have. I, I'll go into it, but you have to. You, and it's just audibly. It's not like I'm. I that was actually an overly generous analogy, because you have to go by audible beeps in the space between the beeps. And if yeah, you're and on it's... a galactic scale, they're not going to change in any perceptible way across light years of space. Oh, it's so dumb. Um, um, we watched Aliens recently, and like they have a better vision of that already. Yes, in there. the the tracker that. Um, uh, Newt Hicks is gives given. To, yeah. Hicks gives to her, and uh, then she gives to Newt. Um, it's got a digital uh, display on it that has a distance on it, <laughs> because digital displays are super cheap, and in the future they're going to be double super cheap. It, it, I, I predict that in the near future it will become regular for firearms to have digital displays on. It. Mm. I mean, I, I just think they're going to be they're so cheap and reliable these days. It's just going to be a natural evolution of a technology like some people have a problem with that in like aliens and halo and stuff there's a digital counter of ammunition and some people say, I've, I've heard so, people say someone, that's silly i was like no that that makes total sense someone mentioned that they haven't dealt with the the tracker yet and it's like yeah i think that's i mean i could be over exaggerating, I think that's by design because season two is about him getting Baby Yoda to its home world, and so I think we're going to be dealing again with, let's say he's going from A to B, and then someone shoots him, and he has to go to some place to get repairs, and then along the way he meets you know Guy, and Guy is like, "Fuck you, I'm going to kill you." That's another episode, and then one episode he has to get past a barricade, and he has to infiltrate it. Another episode will be someone boards his ship as a uh, needs help as a help distress signal and he goes to it and it turns out they're a bad guy that sort of shit until the final episode where he gets baby yoda to the ho the home world but shock horror the entire no. planet is dead all of them are dead and what? baby yoda's species are gone how tragic oh, no. and now oh, they have to stay together season three I don't know. It could be any one of those kinds of endings. But yeah, the whole, we need the tracker to still exist for Mando to keep encountering danger easily, probably. Um, Not that he, it is, the funny thing is he doesn't it, need it, but they might think he needs it. It's, it, it's, tr it's, cr it's just treated in this extremely unceremonious way for how world-changing that technology is. Um... Wow, Southpaw Druckmann fanboy, boo! That's the thing, if anyone sees that copy pasta out of context, they actually are like, wait, do you, do you like hate Mola? <laughs> no, 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 no. Your critiques are poor. Dude, Aragorn just like casually dealt almost 20k damage, what the fuck? That's Aragorn. Let's, let's do Mary Barathor. Sue. Now, now Barathor's gonna try. 
It's a, it's a solid... Yeah. Yeah. It, it is, you know, it, we, we, we're getting there, but Aragorn is just smirking. He's like, yeah. Oh no, you killed Aragorn. Did I put a, a resurrect on him? Oh, I did. <laughs> there he is, with 14k health. God. Those trolls Aragorn's are like, you like serious? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, he wait. didn't... Oh, he wasn't full healed. Full health. Wow, there is, uh, yeah, a, it's there is a limit. A it's just enormous. Does it even say that? Revive a fallen party member. The game is great, Rags. It doesn't tell you any statistics. It's just like, nah. It just does a if thing. If you ever make a game, people in chat, tell <laughs> players what things do, please. Please. Human beings aren't stupid. <laughs> we can handle it if you just tell us what things do. It's almost like they don't want you to know which is the best move. It's like, I'll find out eventually. <laughs> it's only a matter of using them. Uh, what Rag said is Ark the Lad Twilight of Spirits. I have no idea what that means. I don't know what that means. But that sounds like an anime. Mm hmm. The Last of Us 2, what should have happened? Joel is about to get clubbed, but a mysterious stranger saves him. Joel, who are you? Stranger. They call me the Don. Yeah. Don would save Joel. No, absolutely. Unfortunately, they're in different universes, which is not normally something that stops the Don, but this time it yeah. did. The, the see the Last of Us universe is the universe where Captain Marvel won. Yes. And if you guys she have seen the meme, she took over the Earth. She is... destroyed everything. Uh, she destroyed. Oh no, Bob won. He destroyed yeah. like seventy five percent of the world, and there's only like one mega super city that's based in Los Angeles or something. Mm -hmm. Seattle. Oh, apparently it was an old video game. Oh, I don't know it. Um, Iron Giant and Unbridled Praise when? It's perhaps sometime in the future, who knows? I'd have to watch it again, I haven't seen it in ages. Iron Giant was I'm such sure good rap. it literally as good as all of your memories say that it is. Excellent. And it couldn't possibly be wrong. Hey guys, remember gay Appabend? Me neither. Is there, is there a gay version of Appabend? I don't think so. Hmm. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I don't remember, I don't know. Also High Rags. And Hello. Halloween equals best, but it's not really celebrated in Australia. That's yeah, that doesn't sound very best to me. Yeah, that sounds like some some something totalitarian's going on over there. Go stop them. Oh gosh, so many levels up. Well, at least this means that the team will be fully healed and I won't instant die. That's a plus. We're finally almost catching up to where I was already. How great is that? Uh, never mind the problems with distribution, limited quantity, or possible nefarious purposes. Isn't there a mention or a reference to the fact that harvesting Ellie for the cure is not guaranteed? Well, it's all, we already know it's not guaranteed. Just like anything's not guaranteed. Like with creating a vaccine with one viable, uh, you know, patient to work with. I feel like they really try to ignore this shit, just saying. Hmm... But yes, true. Eternal Darkness Super Chats in Gaming when? I'm not sure Eternal Darkness will work out. There's a couple of games that like need a lot Eternal of focus Darkness? and memory and stuff. It's a GameCube game. Um, this this game has been perfect because I can pause it literally whenever I want. As in, like the gameplay will keep uh -huh. moving and it'll be something people can look at while I'm reading stuff. It's it's like the best of all the games ever for this, but. We will be beat this eventually, and so next up uh, could be anything. I did say I, I got Tirok working, so that might be a one to do. Though that one's yeah. not one I've played in so long that I would likely be distracted by not knowing what to do. That's the last thing you want, you know. Uh. Hmm. Do do do. Mupa, why you not read my super chat? Winnie the Pooh is Apex Mary Sue. Hola, El Ragos. Hello. Um, is Pooh? I don't think so. I mean, he's got he's got an issue with honey, you know. That's something. Yeah, he's got a honey addiction. Um, it's, it's really I think sad. he's got some memory problems. He's not, he's not particularly bright. Um, he's a he, fun-loving he bear. I mean, but, in you know. universe, he is described as a silly old bear. Um, I I'm not sure. I feel like Christopher Robin, which I believe I don't know what what's canon. Winnie the Pooh canon. What's Pooh canon? Mm -hmm. But. I don't know if they're actually real or if they're just part of Christopher Robin's... Well, I guess not, because they do things actively when Christopher Robin isn't around. Um, which means either that this is 
Christopher Robin explaining what they must be doing while he's gone to us. Or, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the, 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 the poo lore. If someone can inform us on the poo lore, I don't think I need to be more specific than that. Then, uh, we should be good to go. I told Haddard to attack them. They missed. They attacked him, and then he counterattacked and killed them. It's like, oh. Well, I guess that works out. Haddard's an interesting guy. Man's got some ideas. Um, and the last one from EFAB98 is Short Man Bad. So, now we move into today's. Whatever they may be. Um, get tonaled for EFAP 100, you massives. Hail the White Samauri. No promises, White. right? Nothing is ever promised. But some people are like, oh, it's definitely going to happen. It's like, you don't know what's going to happen. We don't know. You don't Nobody know. Nobody knows. Not even Thanos knows. Um, trying to finish a meme for 100, but might not be done. But you'll get it anyways. See you then. Uh, excellent. Um, what... what We'll do is we've already recorded a huge section for E5 100 memes. It'll just be the standard thing of we'll just record more, um, even if it's after E5 100 is streamed. It'll be no problem. Uh, and then it says hi rags. Hello. Uh, P.S. My son is probably four months at reading. Reading, maybe? Reading. I'm not sure about Yeah, at, at the time of reading. Oh. Is this a person who had a kid on EFAP? I don't know. <laughs> did we do that? Did we give you a baby? Did, did EFAP... Sorry, we did, didn't mean to. Did we do babies? I don't remember. It's like, I mean... I don't I'm not babies. against the concept, just saying. Uh, is We can have a discussion about this on EFAP 100. Yeah, but just as a not... primer, to get, to get your brain started. Should EFAP... Is, imp impregnate is impregnation a fetish? I have to assume so. Isn't like everything a fetish to a degree? Well, here's the thing. Like, so, let like me look Lego. Up what a fetish. Is. It's like, can you have a fetish for vaginal intercourse? Uh, right? Uh, hmm. Because well, this that's point, kind of purpose. I guess I need to check the, the definition. Uh, okay, so here's the definition fetish. Um, a form of sexual desire in which gratification is linked to an abnormal degree to a particular object, item of clothing, part of the body, etc. Abnormal. So, here's the thing. Um, gratification is linked to an abnormal degree. So it's the degree, the degree that's abnormal. It's not the object, clothing, body yeah, part, Yeah, it's not the thing itself. It's, yeah. Uh, what would be abnormal? So... Here's what I'm thinking, right? So, um, when it comes to a, let's say, you and I, we like the we like the ladies. We we are admirers of the female form. Yes. For us, especially relative to the entire body, a woman's left pinky is far less sexually gratifying than her vagina is. Mm -hmm. So, in that sense, we get abnormal levels, uh, an abnormal degree of pleasure from a woman's vagina than we would, like, her left pinky, right? But that's only in relation to her single body. If we are talking about our gratification level to a vagina compared to the human race, like all of us, then it is not abnormal to get a much higher level of gratification from a woman's vagina. Well then. But it's just, I don't know, it's... A... Cheesecake is pie. Fight me. Um, you said cheesecake is gay, is that what you said? Cheesecake is gay? Mm-hmm. And it's also pie. Uh, this one said, I'm not sure if this was the same account, I didn't catch the name, it says, um, my grandmother just passed away, thanks for providing company, guys. Um, no problemo. Awkward to come right after what we just discussed. However, hopefully it's uh, acting still as, as good company. Oh shit, it's showing the movie. Ah. Um, I'm hoping that the movie is low res enough that that wouldn't actually be caught on some kind of copyright thing. But yes, uh, sorry to hear about that. If, uh, Like I said, it's unfortunate if that's 
the the same person or another person, regardless, death is a bit of a, a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. uh, if no one likes a movie, is it still good? Looks at TLJ. Lol, nope. You know, at that point we were just talking about yeah. standards. Oh, the game is back. Ooh. So this was the fight that I think everyone died on. So, uh, time to make sure I got my spells in place. Assuming they don't kill me before I can cast them. Oof. Frenzy, bro. This is the thing. You, you unlock the ability to cast two spells at one point. Um, Jesus Christ. So I can apply Aura of Valor twice. <laughs> before anyone can do anything. It's just like, oh my god. Uh... Also, should you ever need an environmental scientist for any vids that objectively get the environment wrong, I'll be there. Oh my god. Objectively get the environment wrong? Um... An environmental scientist? So, like, the way in which the environment is in interacted with, or assessed, I suppose? Well, then... If someone's so... like, I require stone for my mixture, and then they're like, no, stone would not be present in this environment, or the stone doesn't actually work with that mixture, some shit like that, I don't know. Could be a thing. Um, I'm used to Lou, I'll be right back. Alrighty then. Oh, uh, let's see. Lowers defense, but temporarily increases speed. Why not? Wait, we can cast that on somebody? Okay. Oh, it's a move that hits them and it does that, I guess? Oh god, he's so angry. Damn. Whoa! That was a triple critical. I like it. If his speed is increased, then where the hell is he in the, the rotation there? Bloody hell. So don't miss, Barathor. Boom, boom, boom. Good enough. Do, 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 do. Thoughts on gyro controls for shooters? Um, I haven't really tried them out, so I don't, I don't know. Um, I'd hope that they are good. But I could, I could see them being a bit awkward until you get used to them, sort of thing. Um, I don't know if they would beat out the mouse. But again, I would, I would just have to try it myself. I will, I will ask Rags once he returns if he's uh, done anything in that regard. Let's just do Frenzy again. We got a full re refill of uh, spells. And now everybody has Aura of the Valor. <laughs> Have you guys heard about the upcoming LEGO Star Wars Holiday Special where Rey goes to travel back in time to mentor Luke on the Force? I have heard things about that. I apparently, uh, apparently it's coming out in November. So Rags and I, and, and whoever else, may very well check it out. May very well watch it. May very well make a EFAP mini for it, you know? Um, looks, yeah, oof, you know? It, it, we'll, we'll see. I don't know why they'd want to make any more content with the character Ray at this point. Apparently they do. Two strike melee attack. Go! Anyway, triple critical again. I like it. Also, this this is clearly a hard fight, but uh, they won't be able to beat me if Idriel can just recast a double resurrection every time she dies. Head odds down, but he's only going to come back up. Um. But yeah, we've heard about it, and we will probably talk about it when we get to it. No releasing. Have you two heard of Dr. Squatch Soap? Objectively best soap I've used, 100% recommend. But mind both taking the quiz to see what your soap bar is? I'd even pay for them to be shipped. Oh, I, I, I think we'll be alright. Uh, sounds interesting, though. S Squatch Soap? Um, I'll put it in the notes. I'm curious about it. I'll have a look-see. Ooh. Hey Mola, can you please do a video on Adult Swim's Primal? It's an insanely entertaining show and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Is Primal the one that's stopped ages ago? Uh, stars the, the boff from Johnny English, I think he was in it. Unless Adult Swim, maybe it's new. Um, I'm thinking of some weird show about dinosaurs that was out in like early 2000s, or maybe mid 2000s. Um. But yeah, uh, doubtful, because I've never heard of it, but uh, maybe, if one day I catch it and I'm like, oh my god, it's so tizzy. Mm -mm. Hello from Denmark. I'm going to be at sea for about three months, so I may not be here for EFAP 100. Skull for at long EFAP and high rags. 
Um, you would have said hi, I'm sure of it. See it for three months. Well, when you return, there should be plenty of e-fappings to be uh, watcher-roonied. Mm -hmm. Excuse me while I cast Mountain Shield. Um, no. I'm trying to order these because Rags isn't here yet. The second he leaves, there's suddenly a couple that uh, like directed at him. So what the fuck? You guys did this on purpose. I will pop that one there. A good thing this game just runs while I do this, even if it kills everybody. I'll pop that one there. Do squash soup. Video Denmark. There we go. Offers a potato legume to the good boy. Oh, see, that's a rags one. I'm gonna have to save that one too. Angel season four twenty two. Made me cry just a little out of one eye. Reprise seems to make the Wolfman Heart de deal sensical. Uh, along with Season 5, thoughts on your welcome? I don't have an episode from Season 5 that I don't love and will uh, argue for a while is excellently done. And your welcome is one of my favorite ones. Um, I don't know that you could have done better as a send-off to a character that was essentially assassinated. And uh, the episode is very aware of that. At least I uh, interpreted a lot of the language to mean as much. Um, when she when she says, "I can't stay. This isn't me anymore." It's like, oof. I take that as she's kind of been destroyed. Um, and as much as we love seeing her back, it's not quite who she is now. And it would be a like a lie to pretend otherwise. Um, and so it, it, uh, the episode itself does everything it can to bring her back. There's lots of really great interactions with lots of different people, and she feels a lot more like Season 3 than she does at all like Season 4. For anybody who has no idea what I'm talking about, that's good. Um, because that means you wouldn't have been spoiled anything, and those who do, do. So that works out really well. Uh, favorite music biopics? Mine is Walk the Line. I've heard Walk the Line is very good. I never actually saw it. Uh, there's a couple. I'm trying to think of recent ones. The one that um, with Lady Gaga and uh, Bradley Cooper. I, I saw that by chance, and I thought that was pretty good. Oh, hello, Reeks. Hello. What are your thoughts on gyro controls for shooters? I've never used one. I hear that they are way better than normal controllers. Hmm. Um but they're not as good as a mouse and keyboard. Um, I've just heard that they're certainly an improvement. Yeah, I was saying I'm a fan uh, of them. I have not used Anything them. Anything up to step up. Yeah, go for it. Um, hi, Rags. Hello. Did you see how Rooster Teeth has deleted over a decade of their old content for being problematic in the process of becoming nothing but a Time Warner animation studio? Is that what um, John... JG. Um, oh, well, he was with. Um, Kishinima? Yeah, he did mention Rooster Teeth at some point, right? I can't remember. Is Rooster Teeth owned by Machinima? I don't know. Well, Machinima's defunct now, right? I think so. Or at least, it, was it back then? Well, either way. Um, either way, Rooster Teeth apparently have... sucks now. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I hear all the time. It's a shame that stuff has to be censored like that. Mm hmm. And it sucks. Well, it really sucks. I was almost, no uh, you know, cursed as to seeing a certain Faulty Towers episode that would have very much offended me, but luckily that was removed from, uh, I don't even know what particular platform, but just the concept alone. It's just like, oh, thank goodness. My feelings. Mm. They would have been hurt. How could they? Oh, and, uh,. Uh, someone offered you up a potato legume in the hopes of earning your blessing. I thought potatoes were tubers. Mm. And it ends a with hello legume? rags. A legume would be like a peanut. Hello rags, praise be your pickled name is what they said while handing you this potato <laughs> legume. <laughs> Thank you. Was I pickled at the time? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what I said about potatoes. Can we truly know? I do not know. Um, and yeah, do you have any favorite musical, like, biopics? 
musical biopics? Um, I no, I don't think so. I was gonna I say really it's hard to think them. off the top of my head for a couple, but I knew that I'd watched. Um, I think it's a Star Is Born is the one I saw most recently. Even though that's is that a biopic or is that just complete fiction? I think it's actually just complete fiction, so it probably doesn't count. I saw the Freddie Mercury one, which was okay, but um, as many people have pointed out, the editing in it is pretty um, surprising. And it got like a nomination for editing, I think. It might even have won the Oscar or some shit. It was really weird. I guess that does. Apparently, the Spinal Tap one is uh, apparently good. I remember hearing about that one. Rocket Man, yeah, that's the uh, Elton John one. The Star is Born is essentially a remake. Yeah, I remember there's been a there's been more than two of them, right? There's been a few of them. Like they they keep remaking it, which uh, just with different actors and stuff, which isn't a problem. It's just a different generation, but the same story, from what I can tell. Uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. Yeah. Everyone's got Aura the Valor. I can't lose. I'll be fine. I swear. This time I will not lose. Guys, you got it all wrong. Joel only killed everybody because growth and development require conflict. So saith Kreia. Praise Joel the Destroyer. Praise Joel the Destroyer. I agree. Praise Joel the Destroyer. I'd rather praise him now. than Abby, so... I saw the body for the first time last night. I blame you for the way I'm feeling now, mutually. Uh, character's breakdown made me lose it. And then it just ends with fuck you rags. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh, well. Um, in line. Yeah, that's one of them episodes that most people don't come away feeling anything but sad. Incredibly well made. Muller, have you ever listened to the band Ginger? If you haven't, I recommend them. The lead singer, Tatiana, is, in my objectively subjective opinion, one of the best metal vocalists. Sweet. No, I've never heard of them. Yeah, I don't listen to soulless music. <gasps> I don't listen to devil music. Joel, the eater of worlds, if only. Don't be four hours late for EFAP 100 rags. Ooh. How rude. Wasn't it two hours uh, for EFAP 50? I don't remember being four. I, I don't, it wasn't long because it was just a, I guess a, just a communication systems or something, or I don't know. I'll be putting on two different alarm clocks myself. Two. Can you believe it? Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna have my computer one going. I'm gonna have my phone. I'm gonna have my egg timer. Everything's gonna be lining up. It's gonna go... And you're just like, I get it. Get it. And you turn them all off and go back to sleep. Leave me alone. Go away. Stop it. Hi. Before 100, can you dumbos read the Jar Jar lines and watch Hardcore Henry so that we can move into new Super Chat memes? Also, 101 needs to have 101 in the video. Needs to have 101 in the video? What does that mean? Like 101 Dalmatians? Didn't, did, they didn't specify Dalmatians, but... Also, I'm getting concerned. Well, I'm talking if there's 101 of some. It would fit, right? They killed Hadhod. The, those fuckers. Oh no. no! If only there was a way to bring him back. Oh, if only Barathol could ever hit his fucking. <laughs> oh, now that Hadhod's gone, I have to miss in his stead. <laughs> it's what he would have wanted. But he hits the counterattacks. Good, good for you. Good for you. Leeching blow. That sounds sexual, doesn't it? Leeching blow. Mm. I'm gonna suck the semen out of your penis. Right out. Counterattack again. At least he hits those. <gasps> Idril's dead! No! Now she's resurrected. Alright, time to self resurrect and then resurrect Had Hard all in one move. Let's do it. Not broken whatsoever. Um, Eventually a game gets to the point where, well, as long as the enemy person doesn't move first and insta kill me, it should be alright. Yeah. That's good game design. And as for Jar Jar Lines and Hardcore Henry, absolutely not. Not in a million, bazillion, ten trillion years. But after that point, yeah, sure. It won't take that long to get through all that. Um, so will you check out DC Fandom on August 22nd? Lots of interesting stuff coming up there. Movies, games, HBO Max, Green Lantern, etc. I beg you. Well, apparently it streams the same time as we're streaming Fab 100, so I think people in chat will just keep us updated on what's uh, anything interesting, like... Oh my god, they're doing the thing with the thing. You'd be like, Whoa. Oh my goodness. I never expected that. Apparently, because Fringy was telling me that they, they're going to announce 
CW stuff too, so we might hear some stuff about oh. Batman season two. Uh, yeah, do, do, I want do, some do, season do, two trailer. Do, do, do. Oh my stuff god, that would be wonderful. Get me through. Live reaction. Yeah, we could, um... Oh yeah, we could do a reaction to it. A little carryover until the second season begins. Yeah, we, you know, chat. You still got two episodes left for uh, Batwoman. So mm -hmm. you know, stay safe. They're coming. We've we've paced them out enough that hopefully there won't be a huge gap between the end of season one and the beginning of season two. Isn't it sad the original air date was like early January? It's probably so much later than that. <sighs> sad. sad, sad, sad. Pictured potatoes mashed. Hi, Rags. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> You've seen that image. It was wonderful. Uh, hi, hi guys. Two rags. I remember you saying something like rap slash hip hop was crap. I don't know if it was a joke or not, but if I'm curious, if I if not, I'm curious why. Um, I think I think a lot of, I think a lot of it's just bad. It's not appealing. I don't think a lot of it's clever. I don't think a lot of it's pleasant to the ears. I think it, I I there are rap songs I really like. There are hip hop songs I really like. But they are the exceptions, I think, generally. I like, I enjoy the concept of, you know, what those are, but I just think that a lot of it is really, really unappealing. Well, there you go. I mean, I don't really have a strong opinion about it because I haven't listened to enough of it, but uh, I know this stuff I like and dislike. Standard answer. As a musician, there is so many good genres of music. I mean, all genres, uh... It can't be good or bad, right? Because they're just genres. They're just types. Yeah, I mean, I do generally don't like country music, but there are certainly country songs that I really like. Does everybody got resurrection tisms on them? Probably not. Fuck it, Mountain Shield again. Rap hasn't been good since the Beastie Boys. I remember the Beastie Boys. The good old days, I suppose. I just remember them pop popping up in uh, Futurama. Uh, help me, long man. My family doesn't believe in objectivity when it comes to media. Also, tell Rags that he has a nice personality. A really big one. Ooh, thank you for noticing my big personality. I appreciate yeah, that's it. very nice. Um, uh, I mean, believe in objectivity. Like, just being objective? I don't know if you're just memeing. <laughs> it's like, it's not. Yeah, because... Most people are okay with the concept of, like, the difference between making a judgment with, you know, your personal bias being influencing all of it versus not. We do the best we can, humans, you know. But there are some statements where it's just like, try and prove the personal bias in this one, and someone's like, I don't, I don't know, you, you mm, shut up. Um, my time at Portia is a post-apocalyptic Harvest Moon-style game with an upbeat tone. Cosmo is wrong as usual. Yeah, no shock there. Just your everyday sort of like, oh, he's wrong again. Huh, how about that? Mola, please play Near Automata on stream. It's so good. If you don't, I'll pester more than the guy who wants you to watch that stupid movie. Oh my god. I mean, uh, maybe one day. What? Okay, maybe yeah. one day. Can't wait for EFAP 100. Also, hi, Rax. Oh, hi. P.S. Have y'all heard of Civi 11? I have. What's that? He's a YouTuber. Oh, is he good? Or she? Yeah, I think so. I like, yeah, he's, uh, he's good. Mm. He's funny. Yeah. Funnier He's got some than fun stuff I've watched. Is he the funniest? Because I'm not gonna watch it no, unless it's the I funniest. I don't think he's the funniest. Hmm. What is the point? I ask you. What is the point? Yeah, neat. You are kneeling before Rich Evans. He opens his pants, and his Pringle can hits you in the face, dazing you for a moment. What do you do next? His Pringle can. <laughs> Apologize. Yeah, I wouldn't wanna. I wouldn't oh, wanna... oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Don't anger the great god. Fucking hell. Nobody's dying. This is a good thing, I guess. We get a lot of XP for this uh, particular one. Moosley, I'm gonna tell that the Clone Wars is more overrated than Atla. Hashtag the Clone Wars did nothing right. Oh my good lord. And then someone said the dude, the dude above is wrong. And then someone else said no. And then someone else said Clone Wars isn't awful but very overrated. Oh my god. I hear a lot of people say it is overrated. There's a war in the super chats. Quick, I hope prolong this conflict. <laughs> I mean, if Clone Wars, uh, I, I hear I hear lots of 
bad things, but mainly good things, um, in relation to later seasons. That's, that's what I mainly hear. Uh, Mola, stop criticizing the John Wick movies. I love consuming the product and I'm excited for the next product. I'm not crying, you're crying. Oh no. Yeah. Oh my god, Pride Rock! <laughs> Lol, seriously though, John Wick 2 is good, Battle, you suck. I'm sorry, no. but... John Wick 2 is not good. We concluded that it was worse than the third one. And There's three. more autism in it. It really is awful. Mel's coming for that booty, and he's not going to stop. Metal will not stop. He'll come from the he's women and the children, too. Um, give it the good work, Mola. I've been listening to your channel every day at work. Great content. Oh, well, thank you. I'm glad you enjoy. Um... Every day at work, you even 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 still, I don't think we do enough to actually be able to be listened to all work days every work day, right? Not even not even we can do that. I mean, we don't. Yeah, we don't. Forty hours a week. I don't. We don't EFAP for forty hours a week. Though of course we should. We just you know, we lack the ability. I'm afraid. Even the longest of men are not long enough. Also, I should have cast tism spells there probably. Oh well. Yeah, everyone's still got their resurrection on, so... I am not worried. Everything will be fine. I'm about to earn perfect mode, maybe that'll change this up a bit. Boom. So I know you're a long man. Bad. But how about a series on what made some of the best movies so good? Like Jurassic Park, 12 Angry Men, The OT, Godfather. Yep, those are all things I want to do. I want to do a video for T2. Uh, Alien and Aliens. Um, probably T1 as well. Predator. Those are like my trifactor of movies I adored of that. I don't even know if you can pack them into any one genre of any kind, really. It's just that they hung around a lot. They're really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, all kinds of other movies. Um, Infinity War is, is, thankfully, one that I actually managed to get done before I was distracted by something else. So I have done something that is strictly positive. And then, of course, I would reference my Soma series as being like, I'm mostly positive about that game, not positive about people covering it <laughs> so, but uh yeah the, the i will be um hoping to do more of that sort uh getting around to it lots and lots of good movies to say good things about but of course the um i have positive examples in my critique series that should um, suffice to some degree but a, a main focus i understand would be cool and i will um get around to it one day in hopes uh in Phantom Brave, the speed stat not only decides turn order, if your speed is twice that of an enemy, you will move twice before they do. Oh. Yeah, see, that's a good little thing to add on. Yeah, there's lots of... This you is what I mean. You have to take a long time to balance and stuff like this, because it's pretty much what makes these games worth playing versus just, like... Well. Yeah, you have to... When people invest points that are limited or difficult to acquire into stats... You never want those numbers going up to essentially become useless. Not even that. Like if they become the reverse, being they become incredibly useful. Like uh, DS2 yeah. had this problem. It's like, oh well, I guess I'm doing that. Uh, watched F O T R again. Oh, Fellowship of the Ring again. Paid attention to Baromir. Noticed Phantom it virtually. Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. Uh, no, paid attention to Boromir, noticed in virtually all scenes containing him, he was doing something kind. The ring targeted him. He's a good man. Yep. A really good man. He only wanted the strength to defend his people. I love Boromir. Um, while rewatching. Oh, wait. Uh, also, while rewatching it, um, I noticed no less than four reasons Gimli would want Frodo dead. Not good reasons, but they were there. Where is Jay? I wags. Hello. I'm, I'm guessing they're like, Frodo is stealing the weed or something. Yeah. Uh, G Gimli, Gimli was upset. Um, Gimli stash. <laughs> I mean, I think it was something we all noticed, you know? Gimli's bloodlust for the hobbits. He's like, oh, weed! I need Moria. The fucking hobbits! Pieces of shit! You killed Balin! Like, oh my god. About zombie armor, I read a YA series, also set 15 to 20 years in, that included carpet suits as basic armor, called Rotten Ruin. Had some really well thought out zombie parts alongside OKYA okay, plotting. Absolutely, carpet would make yeah. amazing 
really good armor um, against zombies. Because carpet is tough. Yeah, chewing into that like, is not easy. Oh, yeah. Um, and you could fold, you could cut it, mm -hmm. and you could tape it to your arm, tie it around with anything, basically. Um, yeah, that does, that bugs me a lot in The Last of Us 2, where they send people to go clear out areas of zombies, and they're just wearing, like, t-shirts. <laughs> and I'm like, no, well, protect yourself from this enemy. Clicker should never kill a person. Especially how they can, they can be killed by a knife. Yeah, you just stab them, and they die. Like, you're humans. I th I, I'm Being actually smart, disappointed there's no people with things. swords. That'd be pretty cool. I want to see Shad in uh, The Last of Us universe. Yeah, um, especially for killing clickers, you'd, be, you'd use spears with... Oh, right, yeah, yeah they, they're gonna run themselves yeah. into that spear, aren't they? Yeah, you just poke them at a distance and you kill them. Spears are insanely easy to make. It, you can train someone how to use them in five minutes. And if it breaks, it's no big deal. Just get another stick. <laughs> Sticks, those don't just grow on tree. Oh, wait! Oh, no. Oh. Is everyone still ready to be resurrected? Yeah, everyone just sucks right now on the team. Everyone's missing. That's what's happening. That's how the game's gonna kill me. It just keeps making everyone miss. Little do they know, I can cast resurrection forever. Um, but yeah, rotten ruin. Check it out, I guess. Uh, Jay is unironically trying on girls' makeup on Twitter right now. What in the hell happened to that guy? We need Fat Geralt. Here's another one to fix. Oh, um, Jay likes makeup. She likes makeup. Experimenting with the uh, with you know good old lipsticks and um, foundation, I guess that's about as far as my makeup knowledge goes. Rags, you're an expert in makeup. Say more things to do with makeup. Um, blush. Uh, that's one. Uh, mascara. That's another one. H highlights. That's an another one. Fake ear brows. <laughs> uh, face. <laughs> What would an ear brow look like? Ear brow. Well, that's an earlobe, sort of. It's like if your earlobes were fuzzy at the top. Well, the fact that they have their own classification, it means it would be something separate from what we already have. I'm just trying to picture, like, this other... <laughs> just collects... It know. protects your ear from, like, wind and, and debris. Ear brow. It sounds kind of gross, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Uh, DC Fandom is this Saturday, and tons of stuff will be revealed. What are you looking forward to the most? I'm excited for Zack Snyder's Justice League. Uh, Batwoman Season 2. Batwoman Season 2. Um, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Batwoman. I might have been- I might have existed before Batwoman, but I was never really alive. Yeah, I don't really remember what it was like. Feels like a lie. So I do a big stun move with a tree, and apparently all of the Urukai are immune to it. But the fucking troll isn't. What? That don't make no sense. Come on, Barathor, you can kill this bomb wielding. Oh no, I targeted the wrong fucking one. Great. Oh. Didn't even kill him. Barathor, you suck. Uh, watch Konosuba. It makes fun of fantasy and video games cliches. It has two seasons, and the dub is great. I think we've had that before. I recognize Konosuba. Konosuba. Konosuba! Oh my goodness! Triple critical for nearly 16k damage from Barathor. Somebody's been eating their porridge. Or, or spinach, that's the one. Porridge? <laughs> when you eat porridge, you get really strong. Uh, EFAP 100 approaches, and you Dumbo still haven't watched Hardcore Henry. Do you feel any guilt? Yes. Nope. Oh wait, no, that's the correct answer, yes. <laughs> I don't feel any guilt. All of the and no guilt. Alive. No guilt. Jay, fucking Jay is gonna finish Lord of the Rings, step up. Well, Oh, I, well, in fairness, uh, first off, go ahead. I gave him warnings about that, I don't even know that he will. When he turns up on EFAP 100, we're gonna be giving him some hard questions to, to make sure he's definitely done it. And if he don't pass, oof. You know, but uh, yeah, he, he better. Well, I'm saying, but uh, yeah, go ahead. What are you gonna say about Lord of the Rings? I guess I don't know. Hello. Hi. What? You said you you were gonna oh. say something. Oh yeah. Um. So the Lord of the Rings is like eleven and a half hours. Mm -hmm. Hardcore Henry is what ninety minutes or so. 
90 minutes, it's 2 hours, something long. like that. So you, what you're no, saying yeah. is it's way so harder it's to finish quite, Hardcore not... Henry than it is to finish Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so there is that little discrepancy. However, um, Hardcore Henry is definitely not what I would consider basically required viewing for cinema. Yeah, like, I'm pretty sure... Which law is it that says you have to see Lord of the Rings? Like, that? that's a thing. I know that's a thing in certain countries. Um, is there one yeah. for Hardcore Henry? I don't think so. Just just putting it out there, you know, it kind of destroys your entire argument with facts and logic. Yeah, I feel like the Lord of the Rings is so good, it, it kind of is the go-to. Yeah, we'll, we'll see who, who watches what by the time it turns up. I don't, I don't, I don't even know that Jay would actually watch Lord of the Rings. I'm not, I'm, you know, you have a lot of faith. One entire year for him to see a, a movie, I don't even know that he could do it. That's, that's tough to ask of Jay. Hello, Rags. Hello. A well mauler. Hello. I write this from a bathroom with an open door. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, what oh, do you think so. of No Fap slash No Nut November? Have you ever tried it? Also, just saying that objectively Christmas kicks Halloween's orange butt. Oh, my God. Absolutely. It it's, it's no contest. Racist um, and wrong. So, when it comes to... What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, No Nut November. Oh, yeah, I don't know why people do that. Yeah, um, literally never. Why the fuck? I mean, <laughs> I can imagine that the payoff on December the 1st is fucking insane, but I wouldn't ever do that. I I, I understand their self-imposed challenges, but some people would say that having the sex is the challenge with the reward in it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I'm not interested. And even when it's just talking about jerking, I, just, I don't have any interest in not jerking for a month. Yeah, I just don't 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 see the appeal. I'm sorry. You know, a month is a long time for for many beings of this world. We're not talking about hours, okay? We're not talking about seconds. Yeah. Talking, talking about a big old several weeks, and that's just you know too much to ask. Too much. You need to do better than just saying, "Oh well, you know, if it's a challenge because you know you wanna, but you just don't." I'm like, no, no, no. Challenges come with a reward. And I guess if the reward is, oh yeah, well the nut you're gonna have on December the first is gonna be out of this world sublime. I'm like, eh, well, I don't know if it'll be that good mm. to justify it. I've based my alternate history story verse after a dream I had where I was drafted into the army at fifteen, and I woke up wondering what if child soldiers were still utilized. Uh, do you mean like? How how feasible that would be as a storyline? Um, Drafting I mean, you'd have to justify in universe why they would. Um, yeah, they'd have to be spread could... pretty thin, right? Ooh, four thousand. Nice. Uh, I guess it depends. Um, but you'd have to convince people who are reading the book that that world could potentially exist and that they could believe it. But also. I mean, uh -oh. that's not a bad idea. Might be tough to use. I think I've been tricked. So, what? there's an aura that's on a character when they're um, to be resurrected. And I thought that aura was on all three of my team. Two of them just died and didn't come back. Luckily, Hadhod still has his. So I cannot fucking be sent right back again. I was, I was almost sent right back to the beginning, by the way. Right there. Holy um, fuck. There's no save points in between then? No, and the funny thing is, like, I was tricked because there's an aura that came from Barathor, I think, on my characters, where I thought that was Aura of the Valor, but it wasn't. Because you can't look at a character and get a list of their, like, auras. You have to just go by which colors. Is, which is a shit mechanic, by the way. <laughs> so, you almost had me there, game. Almost. Now I'm gonna frenzy and resurrect... Well, put a resurrection spell on myself and on Barathor, so get fucked. Don't worry, guys. We didn't get fucked over completely. We're okay. Um. Yeah, uh. Alternate history storyline where they're still drafting at 15, and there's, I assume, a war going on? I don't know. Uh. Yeah, you just gotta try and 15, justify it all, I guess. I guess not what I had in mind when he said children. Um. You're thinking younger? I mean, or? I could. I mean, I, I could. It's definitely more believable to say that, yeah, in this world, you know, 15 year olds, you know, have to fight, especially if it's really desperate. Yeah. It would probably be more realistic that, like, a 15 year old can contribute to a military effort in a non hold a gun or a spear kind of way. 
you know, when it comes to logistics and support, a 15 year old, as they did in the real world, absolutely contribute to helping a war effort. That is believable. Uh, so, you know, when it comes to frontline combat, eh, maybe not so much. Uh, it might it might be tough to convince people that's happening. Depends though. But if you but if um, you have a culture, especially a, a very a, a, a culture that's very focused on you know its, it's martial component, um, then yeah, having fifteen year olds who are maybe participating in battles but not in a super direct way, very believable. Like if you have, I, I think he said fantasy, right? Mm -hmm. Well, alternate history. So technically. Alternate history. Well, I guess it depends on what time period. But you know, you could have apprentices who work on, you know, the engineering components of catapults and trebuchets. Oh, I assume he was talking and about so like now, there. but alternate. Oh, now. Now, but the well, still, the variable is in terms the, of yeah. You know, carrying, making sure everyone has ammunition, making sure that everyone has the supplies they need, uh, passing messages. Um, helping to load artillery, uh, you know, learning how mortars work, you know, being part of a mortar crew as they're getting, they're getting instruction on a battlefield as to how these things function in a real scenario. There's a lot of places to do that. So I say like, use the 15 year old as ammunition for the cannons. <laughs> you just hand them like swords. We're gonna shoot you at the enemy. Don't Stab let them us do that, though, no boy. Uh. Hey Mola, hello. Thanks to you, I've decided to try out doing reviews and I'm making a Last of Us 2 video. However, I have a problem with staying concentrated and motivated. Any tips for self-discipline? Hi, Rags. Hello. Um, Oof. Eyes on the prize? That's a tough one. Yeah, I've it is only tough. found if... with speaking to different content creators about this very topic that everybody is so different about what keeps them going on a project. And the, what I've found is... I don't know... Yeah, getting someone to become motivated when they weren't motivated before can be... Almost an impossibility. Yeah, and it could be something super mundane and simple that keeps you motivated. Everyone's different and weird like that. I don't know, I... Because, like, what keeps me motivated is that I've chosen the topics very specifically that I know that I can last through my passion for it to begin with. Usually envision how long this project will be and try and own that that is that is what's required and that's what I will do. Uh, there are some days where I'm less motivated than others, but uh, overall, definitely got a Shia LaBeouf sort of just do it attitude. I find that it helps when you break a project up into really tiny pieces and get them all completed uh, one by one. You can get a sense of like, I'm making real progress here. This is great. Um, but yeah, other than essentially partially generic uh, advice, Motivation's a tough one. If you don't have it, uh, it might be something you, you know, end up deciding is, isn't quite for you if you're not motivated at all. It's, it's tough, like I said. Yeah, you have to discover it. Do I really want... Do I want to... Is it the idea of having a finished product that I'm in love with? Or, you know, is the work just not something that's worth it? But, uh, of course, good luck, and I hope it works out. Once lost three hours in Morrowind from not saving. Oh, we've all been there, I think. We've all had those times where a saving yeah. system fucks us over completely, and then we're like, I don't want to play you anymore. You're a bad man. And the game is like, I didn't do nothing. You're like, no, you did. You did. You knew what you did. You, you knew it. And also, the, the worst one is probably either the save file corrupting or soft locking yourself in a game. Uh, that one's fucking annoying. And then you rely on, like, autosaves and stuff. If you got them. Yeah. Please read Batwoman IMDb reviews. They're hilarious. Uh, I have no doubt of that. You mean, like, the positive or the negative ones? I imagine they're all hilarious, to be honest with you. I imagine, yeah. Like, people talking about why it's good is only going to be funny, and then people complaining about how bad it is would also be pretty funny. Um, you know what, just out of, out of spookiness, I'm going to put an Aura of the Valor on him. <gasps> I don't know the Pooh lore. Rags, are we talking about Winnie the Pooh or TKO? Oh, yeah, there is some Pooh lore in there, I guess. In TKO? Yeah, when uh, you saw the shirts, remember? No. 
the, the shirts of you eating poo? You, you don't remember seeing them? You don't remember I reacting? Remember, I think there were ones of, like white stuff all over my face, whatever that means. But uh, no idea what that means. But um, there's, there's people like I think it was Weekend Warrior was pooping into your mouth. I can't remember. You know, really? just artistic freedom. That's what you got. Oh. Yeah. Uh, you should play Jedi Academy. Story is meh, but gameplay is amazing. Best lightsaber combat, hands down. Also, thanks for providing Jedi. great content. I've been watching EFAP while working for six months now. Hey! Um, yeah, Jedi Academy is the shit. I remember playing that on my... Uh, an old laptop. An old hand-me-down laptop I kind of got from my grandparents. And I adored that game. It was super fun to play Jedi. Yeah, I hear good things. I have not played it. It had... Decent gunplay, good lightsaber stuff. Uh, it was really good. Really enjoyed it. But all that's non-canon now. So. <laughs> I remember playing it as a kid, and it starts off. And this isn't a spoiler or anything. Where you're like, a, you're in the Jedi Academy that Luke Skywalker made. You no. know. And um, I remember thinking as a kid, like, this makes sense. I mean, this is what he'd do. He made the, you know, he does the Jedi Temple, and no. he starts the Jedi again. And so it makes sense that I'm here going to be a Jedi, because he's starting to Jedi up. No. <sighs> Disney corrected your failings. Clearly, I should have imagined that something totally different. Clearly. Um, did you see Closer Looks Last of Us 2 video? Thoughts? I haven't seen it yet. It's something to look at. Um, I heard he didn't like it, which doesn't surprise me. Um, also, yeah, sorry to mention that. I'm, I'm glad we, we've been able to keep you company for six months. Uh, I assume that's the entire backlog at that point of EFAP. Who knows? Um, best Batwoman character, Luke, Mouse, or Jacob? Of the, the best character? You know, it is, it is between Jacob and, and Luke for me. Yeah, it is between Jacob and Luke. Um, potentially Jacob? Uh, I'm usually more happy to see him because he's going to do something antagonistic to the heroes of the story, which is what I would prefer, um, because those words are being used wrong, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Like, you know, everything he does is portrayed as like a bad move, while I'm like, yes, Jacob's doing something right. Luke on the, you know, I'm waiting for them to fully realize Luke, you know, he's, he's just being kept down. Go Luke. Do you guys know that a considerable percentage of the population that believe there literally isn't objective reality, even when it comes to morality? What do you mean, even when it comes to morality? Yeah, there is no objective morality. How, the, how close, would... the best you could do with objective morality is to come up with a framework for morality and then make assessments based on that framework objectively. But there's no inherent uh, objective morality. Yeah, Morality's you'd, you'd uh, have to have a, a holy book source, or um, you appeal to like what? Because I don't, I don't, I don't see this as very convincing. But a lot of people like to appeal to what we, we see in animals and stuff like that, as if as if we're all meant to act in certain ways, and that there's definitive pros and cons to actions and stuff. It's a bit. Yeah. Um, but that's a that's I mean, a whole topic. Yeah, uh, but. You're, if, if you're if you're going to claim that there's an objective morality, then you have a lot of work to do in trying to convince people. Connecting uh, the dots the from a foundation to the actions themselves, you know. Yeah, and I don't uh, don't think that you. Can. So say animals act on instinct, not morality. No, not true. We've seen uh, displays of morality. For, uh, but again, that's another very big topic. Very big. Uh, please remember that humans are just really good animals. <laughs> Um, we did a good job. Yeah. Those opposable thumbs, they helped out a lot. And, and there's no... Yeah, the, morality shouldn't... Uh, you, you don't need a religious or spiritual component for morality to have it work. I mean, mm -hmm. I consider myself a secular humanist, and that... You know, saying humans are not animals. It's like, okay, well, if you're gonna, if you're gonna make the argument that they're plants, uh, it might be a bit more difficult, but humans are absolutely animals. Yeah, we're not. Um, I think it's as that that might be. I we think... might be dealing with someone who considers it, it might be a religious thing because like humans, are totally animals, <laughs> like categorically. Yeah, I, I think here's the thing: don't confuse saying that animals are humans with animals are merely humans. Um, it, it doesn't devalue what humanity is to just say that yeah, we're humans. I mean, we're primates. 
I mean, I don't know what you want. I don't, I don't know what you people want. <laughs> it, well, it's, it's going to depend on uh, how people categorize. Uh, they might have their own perspective on that one, but from what I understand, yeah, we, we are under the categorization of animals. Someone said, when it comes to morality, if you uh, there's objective truth in everything. If you disagree and say it's subjective, you have to concede that if 51% of people suddenly said slavery was right, then it's morally right. What? There's about 30 things wrong with that short statement. I was about to say, uh, I, have, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> so remember, um, oh, we didn't actually cover it, um, but someone made a video where they were, for whatever reason, under the impression that we think objectivity is just whatever most people believe. In fairness, a couple of people have consensus? said, yeah, a couple of people said that's what we purport, which is not what we do at all. Yeah, which isn't true at all. Um, the amount of people who think it uh, doesn't mean something is morally correct or incorrect. Um, so, yeah. Um, don't know where you got that from. If 51% of people think slavery is morally good, that doesn't make it correct. Same thing if 99% of people think so. Um, it, 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 it can't be justified within my moral framework, and I think that my position on morality is based on the facts of reality. Uh, which is why I consider myself a secular humanist in that regard. Hmm. Uh, I created my very first video meme for EFAP 100. Hopefully, it is either gonna be covered or shall be picked up. I hope I don't miss it. Um, just saying, Mola, join Christmas. It's the superior side. We get free elf labor, enslaved elves, orcs to mine you coal, and did I mention elf slaves? I will say, a very tempting aspect of Team Christmas. Um, but in fairness, Halloween does have like an army of demons and stuff. And they all have powers. As opposed to armies of angels? In well, heaven, praising the birth of little baby Jesus with all the animals see, in the crib. I don't know. I think that's lame. You know, I just, no, I just... they got no, dude. No, not at all. <laughs> Absolutely not. Demons get fucking. The angels can they have the big armor and oh, and and there's the the some part of the Christian mythology is that like the seraphim, right? The the seraphim angels. So they have six wings, but they have faces on all sides of their head, so they're uh -huh. always, like, looking out and stuff. So was that, so, and some, before someone asks, is that true, it's like, no. Because <laughs> all that shit's made up. So, but it is, it is really cool imagery. But I will caution, uh, of course, the army of demons I was referring to is very true. Uh, oh, 100%. I mean, it's, they're both cool. Um, <laughs> but, I don't know, that's all good. Someone okay. said Halloween has the best music. I remember when um, we talked about Thriller. But Thriller came out before Christmas. Well, so that, you, you can't know. you can't make that claim. What's the requirement for Halloween versus Christmas music? Does it have to be released during the holiday, or does it have to be based around it? So our zombies. So Jesus is the ultimate zombie. So <laughs> things that talk about zombies are all <laughs> the obviously <ultimate> Christmas <laughs> related. <laughs> so there you go. It is kind of the ultimate. He like came back and he wasn't even gross. You know, flash falling off and stuff, and a hug for braids. He didn't even have that. So, someone asks, uh, Rags, why do you celebrate Christmas? Why celebrate religious holidays? Oh, come um, on. So, I don't... I, I guess I wonder where to start. So, everyone here is religious, and, like, everyone in my family is religious. So, if I didn't celebrate Halloween, like, I don't want to get into all that stuff with them. I just play along for my... Right. Um, but it's fun. I get to meet up with my folks. I get to meet all sorts of other people. You know, there's the spirit of the season, and the songs, and the music, and the food, and everyone's got that attitude. And then there's the aesthetics of it, and it's cheery, and it's a great reason to drink. Much like um, music, we're waiting throughout the year for things to change. The fact that it, there's a closing time for Christmas, and for Halloween, and for Thanksgiving, and Easter, all these events, they need to start and end, and they're fun, and that's it. It doesn't actually need to go further than that. They're just fun. It's like, yeah. oh, this is the time you eat a chocolate egg. You're like, why should we do this? It's like, why the fuck not? It's just the Easter yeah, egg time. If if we all come together and say, um, you know, like, today's the day where we're just gonna... Um, I mean, like, the first Thanksgiving, right? Um, they, they, they picked a day to celebrate this thing that had happened, this series of events that had occurred. And everyone agreed that this was the day we're gonna do it, and it means this thing, and if we're all just sort of doing it together, it doesn't matter if what it's based off of isn't true or it, it or you don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. 
like you can still enjoy it for what it well, is you can still enjoy the secular components of it and they can still bring you joy and happiness and a lot of good things can come to you i mean man, christmas was always introduced and taught to me at first when i was super young it's just oh that cool time of the year where everybody hangs out and presents are given and it was only yeah, when i was older like, that people were like do you know what it actually is though and i was like i don't, know. <laughs> I don't really care at this point yeah, it's very, um, there, there, there are cultural reasons to do it, and they, they, it unites us as a culture. So what is this even is pathetic you reasoning? Even, are you, well, yeah, it's have, like, even if you're not religious, like, there there are culturally uniting reasons why you would celebrate Halloween and Christmas and the 4th of July. You don't need any like. of that, though. Honestly, you can just literally just be like, I like, I like Halloween. It's cool. And I mean, you're like, well, oh, you don't, really... you don't believe in where it came from. It's like, so? Yeah, if everyone in a town gets together and decides, you know what, on October the 22nd, it's going to be the Pumpkin Festival. And we're going to get together in the town square and set up all the stands and go to the, we're going to have a fair and a festival and everyone's going to make pumpkin pie and pumpkin lattes and shit. And there's going to be games and food and hay rides and stuff like that. Then if ever, it could be totally, purely 100% arbitrary. But if everyone gets together and does it, then it creates benefits for people. I mean, you, I, I imagine like July was just the, the, uh, I'm trying to think of a name that could be believed, but is also completely made up, like. For a holiday? Technolon. And you're like, what the fuck is that? And it's like, it's basically like the month of sci-fi, where everyone's just like, we watch a few sci-fi movies, we talk about the potential for the future. And maybe change the avatars to like futuristic robot-y type things. And I'd just be like, that's cool with me. <laughs> Fine, yeah, sounds like fun. And I like, was... go to cons yeah. and stuff maybe, maybe in that month. That's just something people do. And if someone was like, don't you know this is built on some kind of weird thing from some other place some time ago? I'd be like, okay. Uh, oh, give me a second. Go. Oh. Ma, 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 ma. Oh, that's all right. I can, uh, I can carry on. Have you heard of the long man of... He's still playing film footage, by the way, guys. You have to wait. Do, they're doing Osgiliath now, look. Osgiliath! Uh, Wilmington? Long man of Wilmington? It's a giant hill figure in East Sussex. Also high wags. I have not heard of the long man of Wilmington. Sounds very interesting. Uh, just sharpen a pool cue. Oh yeah, that would be a way to deal with zombaloids. I feel like you'd have pretty good tools at that point built for purpose. You wouldn't even need to you know, fashion a thing, but yeah, true. Still going, still Gandalf, running around. Don't worry, guys. I am back. Um, though, uh, that call was to change some scheduling, so I probably have to leave in the next 40 minutes. Oh, we're close. We're close to the end, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, yes, One Piece in the manga still hasn't been explained yet, but the story is in its end game. It'll end in another seven years, probably. <laughs> what do you mean, like, the One Piece part of it? I feel like you're trolling me. The One Piece part of it hasn't been explained yet. Unless they really are going for the long haul. All right. Why, wait, do you think anyone could ever say that anime names could be totally nonsensical? Well, unexplained and nonsensical, they're not the same thing, right? Like a name like I mean, Boogly totally, Boogly. Totally irrelevant, just put together almost as if darts were thrown at a dictionary. <laughs> wombo fanaticism. And you're like, oh my god, I can't wait to find out what wombo fanaticism means. Uh, ooh. Say Predacons terrorize. Alright. No Nut November stemmed from Movember, the movement to raise awareness about prostate and testicular cancer. The retarded thing is that not ejaculating on the regular actually increases the chances of getting nut cancer. Shake my head. Yeah, that's what I've heard. I've heard that uh, ejaculating regularly can uh, decrease the risks. Well, well. Also, it uh, feels great. It yeah. costs me nothing. Yeah. The justification hey. is that my story's World War II was ten times worse than ours, and before then it was more like they were trained continuously until 1718 when they could fight frontline combat. Yeah, again, uh, the, sure. as yeah, long as you support it all, I think it's feasible. You could even push it down to a more controversial, like, absolutely not kind of age if you push all of these, like, Western countries to their limits, I suppose. 
Yeah. Um, I know that in the in the final days of the war, like the Germans would press uh, more younger and more older people into fighting. Uh, but yeah, the, the the no doubt happens. I mean, it, I mean, look at Helm's Deep. Mm -hmm. Just give a kid a good sword. Ultimately, well, kind of it's the thing of like, can you swing this? Like, yeah. It's like, well. All right, you need, you, we need, you need help. To help. Yeah. Yeah. Also, no shave November is the superior meme. I mean, yeah. Someone said throwing darts at a dictionary does not give you random words. You know what I meant. <laughs> Fucking asshole. <laughs> Mola is a very Sue. Rags liked him immediately. Not immediately. You have to watch a whole video um, and then meet me. And then yeah, chat. I had to watch the video first. I uh, think I had come to a pretty decent conclusion before it was over, but... Um, and besides, I can't be a Mary Sue. Fucking shit tons of people hate me. Yeah. Just because Rags likes me. I know that's a pretty good attribute to have as a human, but that's still not going to make me a Mary Sue. Uh, just watch that stream on Metal Commander's channel. We need to get drunk rag more often. Oh no, rag drags runk more often. So, uh... Listen, it might have been really fun at the time in a weird, blissful way, and I've listened back to some of it, and I could see that people really enjoyed it. But, like, that was a really rough day for me. Yeah. Afterwards. Yeah. Too much drank um, I drank a lot. I drank more than I've ever drank before. And everyone's like, oh, I just had a couple beers. No, no, no. I didn't have beer that day. I had I had whiskey. Or I think it was bourbon. Um, and I would just put it in a glass. Like, I had a, I had a cup, and I put ice in the cup, and I put bourbon in there, and then I added some water. I've never drank that much alcohol before in my life. Um, had a, it, it, I had a, it was really rough uh, afterwards. Uh, I... Yeah, Potatoes um, mashed indeed. Yeah, I was mashed. I was mashed. I might do it again, though, for something special. <laughs> but I, I definitely want to be lucid for the EFAB 100 because... I don't know, At some, apparently at some point of the stream, I just departed to lay <laughs> down. And then I cried for Boromir, and it was really weird, and I was just he needed in help. bed thinking okay. of stuff. He needed help. Huh? He needed help. I needed help. <laughs> No, oh, no Boromir did, is what I was saying. You didn't get it, you know? Uh, but yeah, I get... Mm, maybe, but yeah, it won't be for EFAP 100, because I have to be... You gotta stay awake. Like, That's the yeah, challenge with that. Yeah, I gotta be awake staying and drunk. focused. Being drunk is, for me, it, it only lasts so long, and then I just have to go lay down and just be by myself. <laughs> Been watching more movies to catch up on the last decade, and here are my favorites for the each year of 2010. Oh, wait, for each year, 2010s is the social network, 2011 is 50-50, I don't even know if that's a, I don't know that one, and 2012 is the Avengers. Fair enough. Social network is pretty cool. And I do like the Avengers. Uh, Just Right's relationship with EFAP is a better revenge story than The Last of Us 2. Also, high rags. Revenge story? Hello. Who's getting revenge? On who? Oh my goodness. Oh, here we go. 2013 is about time. I'm sappy, lol. Alright, alright. 2014 Whiplash, excellent choice. 2015 The Big Short, I don't think I've seen that. 2016 The Nice Guys, I enjoyed that. Just Shane Black, there's a lot of Shane Blackisms in it. 2017 Baby Driver, excellent production values, not fond of the story though. 2018 Mission Impossible Fallout, excellent choice once again. Yep. 2019 Parasite, again, not a lot of wrong answers for 2019 compared to a lot of years in terms of the there was like, there's like a selection of seven that are really strong for uh, 2019. But yeah, excellent. Marry, bone, make dead, Luke, mouse, Jacob. Effing censorship. Um, hmm. So kill Luke, mouse. Mouse and Jacob kill mouse. Yeah, that's easy. Obviously, kill mouse. Um, marry. Jacob, Bone, Luke. Yeah, I was about to say, because if you marry Jacob, you get access to a lot of awesome shit. Yeah, and I feel like in terms of being relationship ready, Luke is just not Also, there. marrying Luke, you'll end up having to deal with fucking Batwoman on the regular. Like, hey. Well, I guess you get that with Jacob, too, but you can at least be like, nah, I'm gonna stay home. While with Luke, if you want to hang out with him, he's probably gonna be in the fucking Batcave. I'm like, ugh. Yeah. Here we go again. Have you watched Casually Explains videos? 
I've heard of them, I haven't watched the videos, I don't think. Maybe one or two yeah. at some point, but... Yeah. Um, I've started... Well, have you have you watched any Casual Explained? No, I don't think so. I've started writing and drawing a comic book. It's an idea for a story I've had years, four years, and I'm now starting it finally. I blame you guys for a newfound motivation, so thank you. Ah. Uh, also, hi, Rex. Hello! Hello, and yeah, that's good to hear. Keep at it. Go, go, go. Um, only virgins don't rewatch previous older EFAPs. I mean, if if that's, that's true. If, you know, if you read that on like an inscribed stone in the in the cosmos, it's probably true. I'm just saying. Uh, have you guys heard of patriotic alternative? So based, you nerds are not allowed to talk about it. No idea what that is. Patriotic alternative. Yeah, I have not heard of that one. Uh, Oda, the writer of One Piece, has said that One Piece is actually a thing and not a friendship along the way. Oh, it's, it's so One Piece is going to be a thing and the One Piece readers will be excited to find out what it is eventually, I suppose. Hope it's satisfying, assuming that's the case. Oh my. Uh, one of my plot points was that one side did its best to ensure the survivability of the minor soldiers while the other couldn't care less. Oh, like, both teams using young soldiers, but one side didn't really care about their well-being while the other did, I suppose? Like, yeah, could provide uh, an interesting back and forth, I suppose. Uh, rags and or Mauler, hypothetically, uh, would you lose respect for someone you initially liked if you found out they were a Christian? No. I mm. guess it depends on why. Yeah, so the information on its own, no. Especially someone who I, uh, like, think makes lots of good arguments and rationalizations because I'd be like, there's probably a, actually a set of strong reasons for how they, they've decided that that's the thing but if you get into like a huge conversation go into all of the weeds for all of the things start discovering stuff that can annoy you, it's like, well, I guess that but that's the same as just getting annoyed by any, you know gaps in critical thinking that you might perceive in someone else doesn't really affect much uh, with me, you know, it can happen with a lot of stuff, like if someone's like, oh, I like TLJ you're like, ugh, ugh yeah, yeah, like, I live in Arkansas, in the United States. I just assume by default everybody around me is Christian, so the idea that I, um, you know, it, it wouldn't, like, it just doesn't mean anything. Everyone around me is, yeah, you're and trying to... they're, they're all, they're, everyone's on the spectrum of stupid to intelligent to kind to mean, and they, they can all be under the umbrella of Christian. That in and of itself doesn't mean much to me, really. Um, oh, I accidentally skipped one as well. Uh, so, oh yeah, but but overall, yeah, it doesn't doesn't really matter to me, and I assume it doesn't matter to you that much either. Uh, no. Um, um, I mean, the reasons matter more than the. I mean, yeah, yeah the, uh, than, than the the conclusion. Uh, Sextisming a child isn't objectively evil. Like, well, no. I don't I don't think that. Like, I'm I'm trying to. That's it. That can't work that way. Um, it, it has to be from our own perspective. Yeah, and how we like, built I think our morals. Yeah, I think it's immoral to do, and I can give you the reasons why, based on my moral framework, why it's uh, why it's bad. But I'm not going to say that it is like inherent to the universe that that is a bad thing to do, because I don't think that you know inherent morality or objective morality. Yeah, and uh, what's right and what's wrong evolves quite significantly over time as well with our understanding, and not to mention. Uh, like, I've said this before, but um, for all we know, in like a thousand years from now, the idea that we ate animals is going to be considered like a horrifying thing that our society was okay with or something. Also, to address it in the chat really quick, someone said uh, there are apparently diamond mines in Arkansas. So, a little bit of thing. Arkansas has the only public diamond mine, I guess you could say. Neat. It's in Murfreesboro, uh, Arkansas. Crater of Diamonds is where it's called. It's basically a big ass open field where you can go and you can try to find diamonds out there. And every once in a while, someone does find a diamond of a of at least appreciable value. Um, a lot of very geologically interesting formations and stuff up there. But yeah, you can go to Murfreesboro and check it out. And um, even on, or they made all the quarters that had all the states on them. Uh, Arkansas's quarter um, had a big old diamond on it because only place in the US you can go out and mine for diamonds going out there so yeah Kaiba is an anime that explores transhumanism in a world where your memory can be stored moved and manipulated awesome 
yeah, there's uh, lots of different properties that are doing it, and it's always fun to check out the different worlds. Uh, Altered Carbon was an attempt. Soma is obviously ex explored. It. Blade Runner yeah. doesn't. Sorry, that's just I'm, I'm mixing mixing things up there. Uh, I was thinking like what it means to be human mixing with uploading your brain. Um, but yeah, lo uh, lots of good examples. Have you listened to MC Jabo? It's mundane Matt speech mixed in talk parody hip hop songs. It's the funniest music ever created. Look it up seriously. MC Jabo. MC Jabo. Um. Do. Do. Still a better love story than Twilight equals better revenge story than Last of Us 2. Hello, Rags. Hello! And yeah, that, I can see how that'd be a comparison, absolutely. I, well, it, it, certainly in our community, it's been coming up a lot. The New Age version of that thing. Version of that thing. New Age version of that thing. I like it. New Age version. It should be noted that in real life, it was commonplace for men to lie about their ages during world wars. Yeah. Yeah. Might be my last super chat, but please watch Dragon Ball Z abridged. Also, it's quite sad how far Rooster Teeth has fallen. I mean, that's all I've heard, really, because <laughs> I didn't follow him. All I hear. Um, but people seem to be upset about it. Sorry yeah. to hear it. And uh, Dragon Ball Z abridged. Can't promise anything. Unlikely that I'll be watching it. I suppose is the best I can actually say. Uh, I, I don't see when. Unlikely I would... that yeah. I will um, engage in watching. Not impossible, Dragon but unlikely. So you're telling me yeah. that a Roman legion would be better equipped to handle the zombie apocalypse than the Dumbos in The Last of Us 2? Yes. Yes. Undoubtedly. Not, not even, even close. close. In yeah. fact, <laughs> they would be... With with the shields and the, the gladi eye, uh, the gladi -E, um with their Lorica segmentata and all their armor and stuff, absolutely they would be. Like, here's the thing. Zombies, especially in, like, medieval settings would get fucking like they they could never get into a castle though ever would be really cool to see that i'm sure there has been yeah. attempts at doing it in media already but medieval plus zombies do it yeah it could absolutely work uh based on how you frame the world how the zombies come the traits of the zombies um where they attack like if they if they swarm upon a village or if a village has very little time to prepare for a zombie horde coming its way that could be super tense and exciting but Zombies are not getting into a castle. You'd have to make them superhuman in order to do that. Oh which shit, you could do. dude! Absolutely. I just I, I completely blanked, and you can tell me exactly why because we both know fucking Game of Thrones did that. Well, yeah, I was thinking of it. I, I blanked. I, it almost like it went without saying. <laughs> because I there's completely no fucking way forgotten zombies it. are getting through a stone wall. Well, just it, I I was just thinking about how cool it would be, and then it's like, what are you talking about, more? They did it already, and then I'm like. Oh, fuck, that yeah, abomination. Well, the castles would be those, like, a place where the, if there's a bunch of zombies running around, the castles would be the safe places, but there's yeah. only so much room in a castle, well, and not everybody can fit in. I think we talked so, about it yeah. um, in one of the streams, but, like, I would love, because a castle is so good against zombies that the way to do it is to just have an insane amount of zombies. Like, they just, they pool over. There's so many of them. And then you have, like, a yeah. force to... You know, the, the castle is really pushed to its limits. That's what we'd like to watch. Instead, what we got... Oof. Yeah, you could make it work. What Catapult. I would probably say for a medieval setting is to keep zombies with the not individually strong, but in numbers, they're terrifying. Yeah. And give them some kind of a supernatural power. Well, like, um, um, if you remember the... Like they in YMS's Walking Dead series, he's like, they're puncturing through horse skin to pull out its intestines, like, with their hands. It's like, they must be super strong. Like, how are they doing that? And so... Yeah, give them, you give them something. Like, they're strong, but they're clumsy, and they're not well coordinated. Or they never have to sleep. They never stop moving. They don't have to breathe, so they can travel underwater. Um, they... Like, maybe they're being controlled by an intelligence outside of themselves so they can act intelligently if they're directed to. Um, you know, there's all sorts of stuff that you could do that could be really interesting. Rip Game of Thrones once again. <laughs> Just keeps coming up, you know? Uh, do, do, do. Moops, will Peepo be joining us for 100? Hi, Rags. Hello. Um, 
I suppose we could put people on the screen. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. Be people's busy, you know. He's protecting people from that scene. Like he came in as a hero for my stream, but he's not going to do that for every time for everyone, you know. People's a he's a legend though, and I understand why you would ask. Um how to make Evil Faction appealing to play in WRPG? Say it one more time? How to make Evil Faction appealing to play in WRPG? WRPG? WRPG. I guess that means Western role playing game? Uh, oh, I don't, yeah. Okay. I don't even see why that would be any different based on if it was Eastern or Western, honestly. That yeah. depends on the faction itself. Give the faction a noble goal, or, a, or or an understandable and sympathetic uh, goal or cause, but have their methods be very questionable or excessive. Have that motivation. Uh, have their motivation be perhaps fear uh, of survival or desperation. That helps you understand their motivations clearer. Um, it's been done a lot, and even, even I though think that there's. You yeah. could have like a soul, like if you're playing as the zombie team, or you're playing as the horde or the the flood, for example. Um, even when their motivation is just they're just beasts that kill, it's like even then it can be fun though. Cause you're just like, yeah, spawn hive, spawn, you know, thing, infect, woohoo! I'm being the evil people, you know. But if making them appealing, like visually or just just in a sense of like, I actually want to play as these guys. I believe in their cause. It's like at that point, you're gonna have to do a lot of research on. Uh, how a faction could be a, considered evil while also being something you agree with. They, this can get complicated. At that point, yeah, it's, it, it's not actually difficult to do. The thing is, people just don't want to commit to it. Well, making them sympathetic or something? Yeah, like people, a lot of people, when they make stuff, they, they either don't want to deal with the ramifications of an antagonistic side that isn't actually evil, or they, it, they want it nice and clean. Where the bad guys are just bad, go for it. Um, which is fine, but um, it, it's not like it's not like difficult to actually do. Yeah, you'll probably be right. Most people like playing as the bad guys anyway, sometimes. Um, and that's it, by the way. Dunzo Falumpo, and any streamlabs that came in during this stream will be uh, done next time. We can do a catch up of any kind, which could be next week probably, I don't know, but the, the, obviously what's coming up is EFAP 100 on Saturday, 22nd, 2pm BST start, even if you're not there for the start, you'll probably find it if you search for it on Saturday because uh, it's gonna be a long one, one of them streams that go for a while. You're gonna have all kinds of fan fan things, uh, interactions and stuff in, in between um, the re-uploads on the Moolah channel, some things have been recorded already so you'll see them. Um, during, we'll have all kinds of guests, all kinds of topics, and um, some some neat little surprises, hopefully, here and there. Who knows? Uh, and so, yeah, w without there's no point really saying anything else when an event like that is coming. So, is, is any 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 other things, Rags, we should mention before saying everybody tune in uh, on Saturday? Honestly, I don't think I have anything else to add. Just um, looking forwards to the stream. Looking forwards to see everybody there. Uh, gonna have a lot of fun with all the guests we bring in and the videos we manage to cover and the stuff that we talk about. Um, really excited for EFAP 100. It's gonna be an incredible anniversary. Yeah. Um, Zach Gilbert's asking me if Super Chat's turned off. No, no. But uh, we we've the, the, I've covered all the ones that have come in so. We're going to end it there. Thank you all very much. And like I said, we will see you on Saturday. So, goodbye. Hey, everybody there. Yeah, absolutely. Bye-bye, everyone. Tune in. See ya.